What's happening, guys? Just before we start this week's episode, I want to let you know, if you love this podcast and you want more of it, you can get an extra episode every single week exclusively on patreon.com slash haveawordpod. If you don't know what Patreon is, it's basically a way for you to financially support this podcast whilst also getting some benefits for yourself in return. You can sign up for three quid a month, five quid a month, ten quid a month, and obviously the more money you give, the more benefits you get. But even if you just sign up for that three quid a month, which is the price of a fancy coffee or a pint in a ship boozer, you get an extra episode every single week exclusive no one else gets to see it apart from the patreons and you also get 24 to 48 hours early access to the public episodes as well that's what you get and on top of all of that you get access to the entire back catalog of the patreon episodes we've been doing that for like a year now there's loads of content there there's also the two lockdown lock-ins we did in this room where we got dead drunk they only go on Patreon. The ones we do in the future of them will only go on Patreon. If you support us, you get shitloads of content for us, and you can only get it at patreon.com slash haveawordpod. Go sign up now, pause it here, sign up, and then come back to this episode. It's going to be a belter. Hello. I hate it being in that toilet where I can hear someone having a plop. I, when I go, and I go for a, a wee. What, in here? And I just... I don't know. I don't know. I never enjoy it, but here more than anywhere, you can hear someone like, and then wiping up. I'm like, ah, I don't want to hear it. And that's just happened then. Just See, very odd. I like it when you know someone's in there and you can tell they're like, oh shit, someone's in here. And then they hold everything. Yeah. Do, does it, and you can tell there's someone there. And we you do know that. they're like holding a plop just so it doesn't go, fodunk. Adam hasn't got the, Anal no. dexterity. No, I have. <laughs> Anal dexterity. dexterity. I am. Um, I have. Here's the thing, right? If I'm sober or like not hungover, right? Right. Then if I'm having a shit, because I know how explosive my shits are, I'm like, oh, this is embarrassing. So I'll try and hold it until like they've washed their hands and fucked off, hoping they're just having a wee, right? But if I'm hungover, and they didn't see me walk in, so they don't know who I am. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Then there's like this, you know, like when I'm hungover on this and I, I get in like a silly wind up mood. You're like, like, I'll force it out oh. as hard as possible and I'll be like, needed that. Because you're a mystery man. <laughs> you're a mystery man. Yeah. And it's just funny to I me. I know when you've been for the poo in them toilets. Three days like that. You know, just you know, by being in there, I know you've been there. <laughs> yeah, but Carl, your sense of smell is weird. Like, so you sound it. like you've just done it is the two notion. nights on Beak. Like, you really do, like, you sound like you've done a lot of cocaine and you've know, never done any job. cocaine. But you're, you sound, and you always sound like you've got a bit of a cold, but your sense of smell is phenomenal. When you Don't say- let that nasally sound put you off. He's like a fucking sniffer dog. When you say you need a nose job, you mean you need it like drilling? You don't just want like a better nose? No. You want to look As less in, Jewish? I went into the doctor and went, listen, I just want to look less less Jewish. And he went, yeah. like, you need... Don't don't worry, you've come to the right place. We're a racist doctors, so that's fine between you and me. I, well, I went to get it, and then you, you need two weeks um, isolation, like proper isolation, because you're so susceptible to infection. I was like, yeah, I can't be asked. So one day I will get it, but... But your sense of smell is amazing. Yeah. Someone had been round at ours doing work. And oh, Carl no. Them. My, oh, <laughs> yeah. Carl was like, was that John? <laughs> Dan, there's someone on your property. <laughs> <laughs> They've already left. Um, that was last week, Carl. <laughs> I know. Uh, my brother-in-law was staying over for the weekend and he smokes and he was going outside and smoking and then coming back in and he was washing his hands because of like, Etta and everything, and it's just not nice. And I had, hadn't worn his clothes. I, do you know, like I haven't worn his jacket or anything. But I'd just been in and around him. I walked in, and he went, uh, "Have you been around someone that smokes?" And I was like, "Yes, you fucking weirdo." It's smoking in particular that it just. Yeah, I I didn't mm. used to be able to smell it because I grew up in a, a a council house with the windows and doors shut because we're not paying for that eating if we're not getting off. Uh, with me mum and dad. A sad story, but it'll fuck up the adverts, won't it? <laughs> Every time he took, I really want to. I mean, we're Will getting it? fucking demonetized anyway. Right. No! So, oh. Stop, like, forcing us to be demonetized. Do you know what you know what to do in? What? Because YouTube does captions, doesn't it? Yeah. 
All you do is they just search the word cunt. <laughs> and now this one's the monitor. No money for this advert. No money for this episode. So push, push you. Na, 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 na. Press it. Cut, thanks. Because I grew up on a council estate in yeah. Liverpool, right? Yeah. With only one bin. Um, <laughs> I thought you were going to say only one parent. No, just with one bin. No, but like, I'm talking like when I was really young when they were still together. Yeah. They both smoked like 30 a day each in a house with the windows and doors shut. So, like, you become desensitised to Hot smoke. Hotboxing with the rose. Hotboxing with the rose. There's the rest. a fucking draft! I think that's literally, right now, like, on modern standards, categorised as, like, grade A child, child abuse. abuse. <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, that's up there with your uncle fucking you, that. Turn it off. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Did your uncle fuck you? Never mind that. Me mum and dad smoked. <laughs> I mean, what's worse? At least he bought me dinner. Uh, <laughs> Adam, Adam, I love it how he just says things with all a short, like, he's like, don't get, don't worry, guys, I've done the research, because I know this for a fact. I've actually studied law just to be able to say this. It's as bad as your uncle fucking you. <laughs> fact. I deal in facts. Grade A as well, like, that's grade. Grade A. <laughs> grade B. Ooh, a bit so of a what gray would be area. grade B child abuse? Like forgetting um, you're saying we don't, we're not getting monetized. <laughs> no. not, we're, Carl, we're not getting monetized, and it's sad story song. Is it? It's that's the fault. That's where I think so. That's where we're going wrong. Yeah. Oh, and this is from Ferdinand. Like that mama like. That's probably take. So hang on, grade B child abuse. Probably. <laughs> um, Do you reckon grade B child abuse is like getting uh, making them wear three quarters? Yeah. No, you go, you've gone too far down the grade. That's like grade D. No, your uncle, oh, your <laughs> uncle banging you is grade A, and then your mum and dad taking your sports directs for like your clothes is not grade B. There's got to be some grades in between that. No, your uncle going, like, come here, and then your mum no. going, wear them Lonsdales. I think three quarters is like grade D, but grade C is wearing an Echo Tracky, I think. You well, had an Echo Tracky? I did, yeah. Oh my <laughs> God, he's the victim. <laughs> No, but back then it was Adam was taken. I love how you placed <laughs> applause by mistake there. He's a victim! He no. survived! He's a survivor. <laughs> Beyonce. Do you, do you remember the parody of Survivor Song? I honestly thought you started speaking in a Belfast accent then. Do you, you remember, remember the party? <laughs> do you remember the party? I will not relinquish my right to wear a fucking echo tracky. I'm a survivor. I've got a fiver. Got on the bus and knocked out the driver. driver. <laughs> what was the rest? It was definitely another what verse. What was that? That's something that we used to sing in school. Oh, my God. In, in um, assembly. In it, assembly? It was after ignition. Yeah. Cardinal will hear you. Mm. <laughs> Give it a woo woo. <laughs> Everyone. Eyes down, we're going to pray, and then we're going to sing, <laughs> I'm a survivor. <laughs> uh, yeah. We used to sing, down a fraggle rock, swing a fraggle by the cock, <laughs> grab a fraggle by the cock, swing around your head till the fuck is dead. That yeah, was that's just weird, isn't it? That was the fraggle rock song. Yeah. Good, standard. Tell us more stories about the old time, Grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> and we watched it. We <laughs> We watched it on the moving picture box. There was one on every street. Gather round. Gather round. We're going to watch a frag of Iraq. Do you remember you said From telling? America. From the new world, boys and girls. Moving pictures now. Do you remember your first television? Do you remember my first television? Yeah, it was just after the war. Genuinely. <laughs> do you know? I was like, Dad, stick the wireless on. Just and he was like, fuck that. We've that, got a you know moving that picture box. You do, right? <laughs> Pictures now, you know that one, right? Oh, it's my favorite. Genuinely, one of the bits that I'm bringing back is old Papa Dan. I can't love that bit. Do you know if I was writing a radio sitcom or play or like uh, basically a non-visual like story, and I I was casting <laughs> a non-visual. I don't know why you play behind a non-visual story. They're behind you. No, they're yeah. old-fashioned. There's a genre on Netflix. Non-visual stories. Yeah, non-visual like stories. Like a radio play, and I was casting a black preacher. I genuinely would cast you before I went, and I'm sure there'd be a big kick-off, you know? 
black preacher roles for black real black preachers or something. It doesn't work like that. You, you just have to be black. You don't have to be a black preacher. <laughs> like they don't give the black preacher role to an old black guy, and everyone's like, "Oh, brilliant, nice one." That's like priest appropriation. It's happened. On the he's Simpsons. not even a priest. He's an actor. <laughs> it's disgusting. My dad was a black preacher. It's happened on the Simpsons, doesn't it? Well, it's happened on the Simpsons. Yeah, like, Homer, yeah. The fellow who plays Homer, not even yellow no. in real life. I meant like a poo. Did you? A poo. It's weird, that, isn't it? It's almost like I knew that. Just a little joke. No, I don't know. I didn't see it's it. It's usually me playing the, uh, what? <laughs> What's the joke? But anyway, yeah. In Big, Mouth, used to smoke. in Big Mouth, they did that thing. <laughs> yeah. In Big Mouth, the, 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 the black girl is now, was being played by number, and they were like, so in season four, her voice sounds different. And you're like, that was literally last year that they went, oh yeah, it's not all right. It's happening as we speak. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> My mum and dad smoked. That's basically the uh, <laughs> wrong button again. <laughs> so what's grade B then? Uh, slap. Do you reckon spanking? No, I reckon like shit chocolate. No, no, because you're forgetting there. Like, th there's the option for weaponry. <laughs> so grade A would be like yeah. gun. Yeah, grade A. What? Shoot them. <laughs> Child. I think that's grade <laughs> A plus. Yeah. No. 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 No one wants to be. You know, molested by your uncle, but it's still worse than being shot in the head, isn't it? Because at least with being shot in the head, you're just dead. No, but no. like guns, then knives, then baton. Are we still talking about child abuse? Yeah. Are you talking about medieval? Are you saying children don't get shot ever? <laughs> what, by the parents? Yeah. Right! <laughs> Bedtime! <laughs> And I fucking mean it this time. Baton. Do you know, do you know baton? Do you, do you know, as you're having a sleepover, you know you're not having a sleepover at the mental kids' house if the parents come in. If I can hear giggling one more time, I will shoot every motherfucker in the room. Major that in Adam's house. <laughs> Gone. Chainsaw. Baton. Twirly piece of material. They're all the same. They can be weapons. Then punch and then slap. Um. Corporal punishment, I think, is one down from, like, child molestation. I think that's B. Is corporal punishment, like, jabbing them and that? No, it's just all... <laughs> all... Double jab. <laughs> double, double jab, jab. <laughs> hey. No, grade B is a jab, and then you fucking connect with the right. That's grade A again. Jab, jab, move. Over and right. <sighs> they're down, because they're four. Fucking get up. I would rather have been battered by me dad right than sent to school in, like, white Lonsdales. Trainees. Would you have been allowed to walk on the property of the school with White Lonsdales? Could you get away with that? We, we didn't have a fucking doorman on the school gun. <laughs> Not to I swear we did. to God, there was, there was teachers who you wouldn't be in school very long before white trainers would just get you like, you'd just be bollocked. You'd be in front of the deputy head's office. You couldn't just turn up in trainers. Yeah, same. Like, I, I'm... My memory of it is that pretty, like, yeah, it does feel so. like, I'm now, I'm now, what's that thing where you misremember things to suit yourself? Like, a confabulated memory. A conf <laughs> it is. Like, I, I remember, psychology I remember bouncers being at the door being like, I'm sorry, mate, you can't come in. Can't. Money. Family. <laughs> Money. So, psychology. So, like, hey, anyone uh, deciding, just finished GCCs, you want to know what A-level do? Psychology. <laughs> Instant money. <laughs> Hey, have you got a B in A level psychology? Well, well yeah, my mum and dad smoked. <laughs> Did your mum and dad smoke? Great to see. Shit, sorry. Um, you were talking about the smell, weren't you? That's what, that's why I brought it up because yeah. I used to just like not notice him. And then one time, my washing machine broke, and I sent it, all my clothes to my dad to do the washing for us for a few days while we wait for it to get fixed. And when I got them back, because he smokes still in the house with like the door like shut and that. They smelled so bad that I just threw them all away. I was just uh. like, I literally got like a week's worth of clothes. And it was me, you know, me in rotation clothes. That's why they needed washing. And they all just went in a bin. We've had presents for our children from members of the family who smoke. And when you don't smoke, I mean, I used to when I was a kid, but like, it's the most noticeable thing. When you were a kid? When it... Yeah, five years old. <laughs> it was a different time. Yeah, you buy them in the fucking... How cream. old were you when you started smoking? When you had, had your first... My dad was genuinely seven. He's smoked since he was seven. 
But it was advertised as like good for you back then, weren't it? Yeah, doctors said it was good for you. <laughs> Mad that, when it? was your dad seven though? Like uh, 1967. 1967. Is he born? In, he's born in the 67. 67. Yeah, I think the it's good for you had gone by the late 60s. Aren't you? I think they were working it out a little bit, weren't they? I yeah. think if you smoke now from the age of 18, knowing what you're not, it's just, it's absolute madness. So you're 18 now and you start smoking or 16, whatever. I think it's, it's for what we know now, what it does, just don't get it. Yeah, it's funny, isn't it? Because you feel invincible when you're a kid and it's just it's just a form of rebellion, isn't it? I suppose. I felt like it was cool, even though the only person I knew who had cigarettes was my gran and she was visibly dying in front of us. So why the fuck I thought it was cool? Like, yeah, love, don't worry, I'll make Saturday you tea. I'm watching the wrestling. <laughs> it's all shite. Ellen B. Oh, classy. <laughs> Gran was a classy girl. How old were you then? Like 15, 14? I was about 13, 14. And I worked at a news agent's in Penworth Ham, just outside Preston. And me and my friend Andrew Justice, who you've know about. Great name. Yeah. Who was all, crimes all, 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 already <laughs> like box. A, a racketeer. We were nicking cigarettes from the news agents. Ooh. And Full packs or my, just like sliding one out? I mean, it started with like an like as you, oh shit! I've left the papers behind. Can I go and get them? And he just had a like it's phenomenal. Just walk past and just flick one or two packs into his bag, into his newspaper bag. They were so thick about it. It must have been six months down the line. He was ending up in the stock room and taking two hundred at a time. <laughs> like, how the fuck did they not work it out instantly? But we would come out of that cigarette with just like a box of Embassy Red, like. 200, which is 10 packets, yeah. cellophane together, and then mix and match. We were taking orders. People were like, well, I actually prefer Regal. You're like, yeah, no worries, Regal. <laughs> B&H, yeah, B&H. Who was doing the stock? So th th now looking, they seem like adults at the time. Looking back, she, I can't remember it. I think she was called Elaine, and I think she was from East Lancashire, from Burnley. And she must have been 22, 23. Mm. To us, they were grown-ups. They're like, yeah, she's the manager. She's just a fucking kid, and I don't think she cared. And maybe she was nicking as well and was blaming it on us, but we that's how I got my first cigarette. I nicked Marlboro Red because it was because I love Formula One, and they sponsored McLaren, and it was cool. So my first cigarette was around the back of my house. I smoked uh, maybe the first millimetre of a Marlboro <laughs> Red and then went, Yeah, yeah it's hard on one. Cowboy. Yeah. That's not an easy, an easy first cigarette, but it looks cool, doesn't it? No. Speaking of news agents, I think yesterday me and Carl stopped a news agent getting his dick sucked. Yeah, we did before footy. That's an interesting story, that isn't it? Yeah. I think if me and Carl didn't exist or were dead, then uh, there's a news agent in Bootle who would have got his his pipe yeah. smoked yesterday. She, she, do she when she got served and then just started chatting? Yeah. Fucking move on, we're in the queue, you soft bitch. We. we <laughs> <laughs> we were in a news agent in Bootle because we played footy last night. Right, just getting a bottle of water. And as we walked in, there was like an atmosphere between the woman getting saved and the, the man behind the counter. And she was buying AAA batteries, which means, you know. You know. Instantly vibrator. Come yeah. force any, of 4,000. Any <laughs> woman buying batteries, you know what's up. <laughs> at, at half eight. You want to find a dirty girl? Stand next to the juror cells. <laughs> But she was like, she, she at one a point, fucking drone, she gave it? him 40 quid in cash. Yeah. And I seen it and she went, that's safe uh, for you. Right. She did that three times as well. Yeah. And he, and this he, sounds like the most working class depressing start of a porn scene ever. Yeah. <laughs> Ali works for the local <laughs> news agent. Linda's dirty. <laughs> Here's 40 quid. That's for uh, the papers this week. <laughs> and a fuck. But then she was like, so uh, you're working late tonight? Oh, yeah. Because we were waiting. We stood there with <laughs> bottles of water behind us. Was he Asian? Yeah. 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 No, he wasn't. What do you mean? No, he wasn't. He wasn't Asian, was he? Well, I didn't ask, but like... No, but I, I thought he was just black. No. Was he not? No. He was really dark brown. <laughs> How have you got such a phenomenal sense of smell, <laughs> but you can't see ethnicity? He's colorblind. Yeah, hang on. <laughs> Let me smell him. No, he is actually Asian, yeah. <laughs> I mean, he looks black, doesn't he? He I looks black. I don't see colour, Dan. Yeah, you don't. And I'm actually colour blind, Dan. You <laughs> You're actually colour blind. I am, but not a black. Uh, and <laughs> that's the only reason I'm not racist. Anyway. <laughs> I'm a nightmare at traffic lights, but I'm very tolerant in terms of racial equality. 
I've stood there waiting to get served. She's like, so you're working late tonight? Have you been working late all the time? And he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he, you could tell he's like, look, I can't get me dick out. I was there, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was in a monologue. I think you're doing a lot of jumps here, boys. <laughs> Batteries <laughs> equals slag. Flirty at the news agent, noshing him off behind no, the magazine. did say as well, there for me come bust the 4,000. <laughs> Silly man. No, it was a 3,000. Oh. <laughs> the yeah, 4,000. 4, 4, it's not even released. Yeah. Hasn't six even, six even been released, so. <laughs> uh, if you're going to do uh, dildo banter, you've really got to try hard. No, it takes double A's. It's too big. <laughs> Genuinely, yeah. you felt like a little bit of electricity in the air. Not electricity. <laughs> no. It was like gas. soil or gas. <laughs> <laughs> what, what was the 40 quid for? Exactly. I what think it was, was the either... the 40 quid for? It was either for drugs, right, or the papers, or for like dick on tick. Do you do tick on tick strap? Dick on tick. <laughs> it might have been. Can I get some dick on tick? <laughs> it might have been uh, Biff's on tick. You know what I mean? Where they're like, Can I have ciggies and I'll pay you next week. We still do that in Liverpool. Some places still do a little. Yeah. You're, you're a regular. Here's 40 ciggies. Gives them next week and put a little four quid on top of it. <laughs> yeah, uh, okay. That's how MasterCard started out. Yeah. Yeah. What? Selling tabs. <laughs> Adam Salt. <laughs> <laughs> believe that. What? I don't know. Right. So 40 quid. So she's been paying for some something. Biff's or dick on tick? <laughs> yeah. Biff's, <laughs> dick, maybe bread. Bread on bread. tick. 40 quid. Bread, bread on tick. <laughs> Lad, lad, you're going to need to give me some fucking Warburton. <laughs> I need some carbs, lad. Yeah. Soup. <laughs> I can tell you, having worked with this numb nuts for so long, Adam's just going round in his head at news agents. He's going round the shop visually, like Adam. <laughs> no, he went. La, 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 la. Adam's walking round the shop, going, "What could be on tick bread?" <laughs> He's up to the biscuits now. Auto trader. Auto trader. Lollipops. Lollipops? <laughs> Fabs on tick? <laughs> That's exactly what I was doing. <laughs> I fucking knew it. I was sat here doing my job, walking around the news agents <laughs> and booting in my head. <laughs> oh, fuck me. Oh. Speaking of him. Um, you I'm soft bitch! <laughs> God! Well, Ash! Fucking hell, just suck his dick on tick or fuck off, no. I've got some Volvic here, you soft bitch. Have you, uh, have you seen them kind of cards for kids now that you can do? Yeah. Fucking mad them, aren't they? It's a good idea in a way, isn't it? Good eight idea. What is it? Um, so it's like you give your kid a card, hmm. but you control all the finance. They also have a banking app so they can... It's just a mini kiddie version of... <laughs> kiddie sounded wrong. But it just to teach them about how to work their bank accounts and money. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they can go to the shop and spend it, but you see and you can control and they've got like chores you can pay them for and like bills and shit Yeah. to teach them how to use money. I think it's boss. I think it's great. And I've said it before and I will say it again with Etta and then Jack, we are going to be doing that and I'm going to work like the four <laughs> quid on top loan system and I'm going to get one of them in debt and then I'm going to fuck up a Christmas. <laughs> because be when I turned 18, 19... <laughs> Got to uni and HSBC <coughs> went, hi, numb nuts. Have you just got to university and all you really want to do is drink and not do politics at Newcastle? Well, here is £1,500 overdraft, which you will now see as £1,500 free money. And here is a credit card with 750 quid on it. Go fucking mental. And within two months, I had jizzed all of that money and never paid it back. I got did into, that, got into my bank was then. in. <laughs> Mate, horrific. And I was, I I was Etta, sound, though. To yeah. be scared of, not pregnancy, not, uh, I wanted to be scared of, like, STIs. I'm going to be like, you go out, darling, you're going out tonight, that's absolutely for it. But before you go, like, every night out, what do we do? We sit with, but daddy's big, file of evil. Oh, God. And I'm sure you said file of That's what you can, 
That's what you can get if you shag without a condom. This is the disease you can get. Bang, close. You're crying. You know. You're crying. Yeah. Redo your makeup. Have a great night with your friends. And I'm also going to teach you about debt by going, brilliant. Yeah, you've you've run out of pocket money. Oh, but you want that thing. Daddy's going to lend you five pounds. Yeah, you can go into the five pounds. And you've not paid that back by September. That's now 15 pounds owed. You've not paid back by November. It's 25 pounds owed. If you still owe it at Christmas, I will fuck up a Christmas day going, you were in debt. And I want it to be like, oh shit, yeah, that's how debt works. She's going to hate me. Now I've said it out loud. She's going to absolutely. <laughs> and as you know, Etta, after every night out, Uncle Carl comes around and smells and sees what STDs you've got. <laughs> yeah. And that's only grade B. We weren't out the grades. And he's not even your real uncle, so it's not that bad. <laughs> At least I've not got a gun. Adam, put the gun away. We've not got a gun. <laughs> I swear to God, I want my kids to be streetwise about fucking STIs. I don't want any grubby little boys going, oh, it doesn't matter. It fucking does matter. And I don't want them to be like, oh, I got into like three grand a day just because I wanted to. I want them to be smart. So if that card helps me teach these kids not to be fucking morons when some bank goes, yeah, just have loads of free money. Don't sure, am I sure. mad? Kids should be taught that in school anyway, though, shouldn't oh, they? Like, hundred percent. I've said I've tried to do stand up about this, but it's not sort of funny enough for stand up. Everyone's just like, yeah, good point. Dan like, Johnson asked about it, and I'm I didn't get round to asking the question. He literally said, "If you're in charge of the school syllabus, what subject would you fuck off, and what would you put in place?" Okay, so the the obvious one is to fuck Ari off, isn't yeah, it? Bye. Like it's it's insane that like religion and, and schooling is tied together. I sort of understand why it is in this country. I still don't think it's right. So if I was actually in charge, I'd fuck that off. Although learning about other religions is fine, but if you go to somewhere called Cardinal Heenan, yeah. I imagine RS is a bit different than if you go to a secular yeah. high school. Because we, no, we learn about Islam. Every year. Yeah. But I don't, there's nothing wrong with being taught about religion as long as it's not from a like, right, we're going to do, you did Ramadan every year. <laughs> He just stopped. <laughs> Salam alaikum. Cardinal Heedens come a long way. Yeah, we, had to but, go, we had to go into school for lunchtime at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> Learning about religion, as in these are the religions and this is what they... But at Cardinal Heedens, you were told basically, right, this is religion. God is good. But God is, is the right. One. And here are the gammy fake ones. We'll do half an hour each, yeah. each year on these. Yeah. Most right. of them don't even like gammon. Right. Nailed it. Absolutely nailed it. So RS is, you're going to, you're fucking it off. I'd keep it around because it's good to know about stuff, but definitely it's not getting taught. It'd like be changed. It, it? Yeah, okay. It would be changed, uh, like the way it's taught. Then I think uh, geography, fuck that off, unless you want to do it. Do you know what I mean? You've got Google Maps. Yeah. Grow up. Yeah. Like, I don't need to know what an igneous rock is. Do you know what I mean? And you don't you don't need to unless you really like rocks. That's the poorest one. <laughs> Probably. He doesn't know. I'm going to Google that. He's and proved his own point by going, you don't need to know what an igneous rock is. You don't need to know, do you? And I don't, and I'm doing great. Yeah. You don't need to know what an Oxbow Lake is. You don't need to know the different type of hills. Okay, fair enough. Like, you don't need geography. Have you ever used it, apart from... Also, can you pick one language and not try and teach us two? Because they tried to teach us two languages. Oh, no, we only had to learn one. Oh. We only had to learn Spanish, and it was only up till year nine, and then you got to the option to pick to a bin GCSE. It, to bin it. But we got yeah. taught by Mrs. Jackson. Who was just Jackson. literally just a woman from? People used to do that when we forgot our homework. Yeah, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Jackson. Woo! I played FIFA. <laughs> Fancy some gammon? <laughs> uh, <laughs> not into it. Not into it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's literally there was Latin at our school. Yeah, different town. <laughs> different town. One teacher. Back then, was Latin still being used? Four hundred children. Yeah, it was still being used. Yeah. Cum latte. Um, <laughs> that's not the coffee you want. Um, Kobe. What else is shite? I, th I think a second language is dead important as well. Just why Why were we doing German and French in third year? What the fuck was that about? Year nine doing two languages. If you could learn any language though, at school. Yeah. If you could go back now with like sort of, not all the knowledge you've got now, but sort of you could inspire your 10 year old self and go, lad, Learn this language. Yeah. Get that teacher to teach you. You get to pick it. What would you pick? Probably Slovenian. Slovenian. Yeah, it makes total sense. I mean, you lived in Japan for a year and you're half Spanish, but Slovenian's the next option, isn't it? Yeah. No, right. definitely Spanish. It's the most it's the most versatile one, isn't it? What would you what would you? I mean I'm going Mandarin just so I know when they're talking behind me back on oh, the ship. Oh, I would love to hear your scouse Mandarin. It would yeah. be something else. <laughs> Un chat, un chat, lat. 
<laughs> Funny episode for me to <laughs> weird weird one to wheel that out for the first time yeah, in a while to do my that was definitely a bit Mandarin on today's episode. <laughs> uh, apologies. <laughs> Right. Spanish is a good option because you get to go around South America. It's, and it's all over. And it's like beak down. So I think, I mean, the ten-year-old me would be like, "Drugs are bad." What do you mean? Forty-year-old me going, "Listen, dickhead, you're gonna want to go traveling early twenties, Argentina, very cheap cocaine, but drugs are bad." Didn't you just say this Dan? is forty-year-old you? So why is your voice changed? <laughs> <laughs> Been smoking again. Because when I speak to ten year olds, that's how I sound. Like. <laughs> Aye, you're all right. I okay now. I'd like Italian as well. I wouldn't mind Italian because oh. there's a lot of passion in it, and you know, oh, tutti frutti. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of tutti like tutti frutti. There's a lot of like. Oh, you don't Maria, know you like the Pollock nails. Like, there's a lot of gesticulation. How? With all the footballers, with all the foods, with all the places you know the name of in Italy, did you go, oh, a tutti frutti? It is Tell a me a more Italian two words than tutti frutti. Tutti frutti? <laughs> you can't. Oh, dear. Yeah. Italian, Mandarin. I do want to know what they're saying when I'm in the chippy. You know, when they, like, say something and then they giggle and they look at you and I'm like... Yeah. All Did you just go, oh, not, this fat pig, not, fourth day in a row? That's better not to know. It's better not to know. No, because if I knew it, I could pull it up on it. What? They're all full of scouts, by us. Not all of them. They're not talking Mandarin. You mean no. Tiso's? They hate yeah, Adam so much, they've like learned that. a different language just to slag him off behind his back. Yeah. Mm. So what would you put life skills, basically, takes up about three or four of those hours a week that have replaced nonsense fucking lessons? What life like skills, li though? Life skills. Debt. Debt. Definitely debt. Debt. Why can't I use a drill? We've had a... Where is it? We have had a new desk for ages. It's been home three times. I've broken two drill bits. I've upset my wife by going, why can't you do it? She's like, I'm a baby. Why don't you just give it to me? Well, it was here and there was a drill here and you sat on your phone and did nothing. That's because what? I was busy. Oh. Just a second. <laughs> Just a second. Do a second, do a second, do a second, do a second, el twitterate, do a second, infinite. Life skills. What other life skills then? There's gotta be some. You don't need to, like, no, to use a drill. You do need to know, like, finance oh. management. Oh, it'd be good, um, though. It would kind of be good. Like, if we're talk talking life skills, I could have known. Yeah. That would have been good. Driving a car. Wow. And you're 60, no, it? What a lesson that would be. Right, year seven. <laughs> no. Everyone in the car park. How's he brought your own car? Stop bringing your own car. <laughs> Little fucking Davy. I fucking got one. Don't worry about it. I Found mean, it. in A levels. What about how to. Yes, Carl. Yes. You did mean <laughs> in A levels. <laughs> Thank you for clearing that up. What a silly suggestion. <laughs> if you were under 17, it wouldn't it'd be illegal to drive cars. <laughs> Thanks for pulling me up on that Just one. Thank you. Forward, what about learning to argue with the opposite sex? Oh, well, that's yeah. going to be good for the young gay kids, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I don't even like women. I want to be able to know. I want to know how to call them smelly bitches. Um, you've just assumed that it's for relationships and not just in the street. You just so basically Adam's misogyny lesson. <laughs> Adam's teaching this bit. Right, right. All the girls fucking in the corner. He's 40. <laughs> Is this 40 enough? You You're not even smoking. <laughs> Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Yeah, I do think. Yeah, it's a life I do it. think. Um, That's like, for the women. Self defense should be taught. Mm. Not like, not like, offensiveness, but defensiveness. You know what I mean? <laughs> Show us offense again. Offensiveness, <laughs> but defensiveness. That's wow. how you're blocking it. Wow. <laughs> wow. That was clearly karate, but defensive karate. I was moving backwards slightly. <laughs> he was the aggressor. How can I be? I'm moving backwards. Uh, <laughs> Any other left wing? Left politics. Skills? Do you? Politi bit of politics. Why didn't we learn about politics? I got to A-level, chose politics. I f it was one of my favourite subjects I'd ever studied. Why don't you know about stuff like that? Oh, fair enough, you don't want to engage in it. But part of the reason is I think people are like, what? And that you only really learn about politics if you ask about when you're... When That's you're, purposeful, isn't it? 
Yeah, but... Like, the language they use is purposefully confusing, so you don't know what's going on. Yeah. I don't know if it's that confusing. Honestly, when you listen, like, it's... Pr- like, there's some right honourable gentleman and all that shit that's a bit fusty. But it's not like the... It's not that advanced. It's more like the political spectrum, the parties. If you don't know about that, you can easily get to 25, 30, be like, what? I don't give a fuck. Yeah. It'd be good to find out what, some stuff about that. What about how to handle an interrogation by a foreign government? Oh, like waterboarding? Yeah. yeah. In case you of times, like crossing the border. The amount of times I've been interrogated by a foreign, you know, <laughs> nation and thought, fuck, I should have been taught this in school. How to yeah. deal with it. How to deal with How not to talk. Yeah. Yeah. You should not have come to China. Why are you still doing that voice? Lad. <laughs> Waterboard. Amazing. That's not much of a waterboard, is it? Don't you go. <laughs> Don't like you go. Baptizing them. A donk. <laughs> You got any gammon, bitch? <laughs> <laughs> Ooh! How to suck a dick? No. No? Uh, back to the languages thing a sec. Do. Right, I, and this might not be the right term for this group of people. Okay. Is it, is Buckle it up, everyone. Okay, good. Eskimos, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. people who Inuits. live in that area. Yeah, yeah, right. Do they have their own language? I think they just bang ice cubes together. They work <laughs> it out. Do they? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Pro- I'm going out. What time are you back? Six o'clock. Oh, fine. <laughs> what was that? The only the only gay Eskimo. I'm going yeah, out. They talk. Inuktitut. Yeah, they Inuk- do. They in- definitely do. Inuk- Inuktitut. Yeah. Inuktitut. So this is what you're replacing Italian and Spanish with at school, is it? No Inuktitut. way. Is hello. Is ah, tilihi. Right. Could we have the telly on so we can see it? Yeah. Um, I, uh, I think it would just be great to learn that. And then turn up, and they're like, fucking hell, another fucking scouser. There's He's going to not know how to say anything here. And then you're just fluent in that, just to surprise people. Another. <laughs> <laughs> Northern Greenland. <clears throat> Northern Greenland. There's literally three people oh, Antarctica. every... What? <laughs> it's Antarctica, isn't it? What? Just... What? Are just... you being silly? Don't they live in Antarctica? No. Oh. No one, lives, in no one lives in Antarctica. No one lives in Antarctica. Oh, the Arctic. It. Yeah. Near Northern Greenland. Right, there we That's go. That's where we were. That's where we were. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did that well at school. Uh, how many times are you going to show that skill off? I just Oh, there's loads. Once, there's a Liverpool twice. supporters club. <laughs> Is it? Yeah, that's why they're like, oh, God, more scousers. <laughs> hey, lad, he's learned. It, n- tuk, tuk, tuk. <laughs> Not once. Hey, he knows the language. <laughs> you can say hello, yeah. Yeah. Ah, titi hi. Ah, ti li hi. Oh, ti li hi. Ah, ti li hi. Yeah. Artily high, artily high, artily high. Worst rhythm I've ever seen you attend. Artily I can speak in you it, but I can't clap for shit. Should have learned it at school. Clapping, that's for the remedial kids. Adam, Adam, yeah, don't worry about Spanish, Adam. Just keep clapping. You guys are stupid, I'm the best. I'm going to the Antarctic with this. <laughs> I'm going to make me some friends with some penguins. <laughs> oh, I love this fucking <laughs> Right, let's have a break. Oh, fuck it up. A breakdown. <laughs> What's happening, guys? Are you on board the CBD oil train yet? Whether you are or you aren't, you should head to SupremeCBD.com dot uk one of the official sponsors of the have a podcast and get yourself some premium cbd oil product from gummy bears to the oil itself this stuff has got a million uses it can help with anxiety it can help you sleep it can help with aches and pains it's really really brilliant it's been helping me and a lot of other people now if you go to supreme cbd dot uk and use the special promo code word that's w-o-r-d you get 30 percent off every and you order and they slide us a little bit of money for sending you their way that's how sponsorship works they sponsor the podcast we push you their way it's a money game baby but you're gonna get money off your cbd and what's better than money off nothing go get it supreme cbd dot uk made me nervous that when the power went off just then for no fucking reason yeah me not laggy just as we were about to hit record as well imagine if we'd done like half an hour of gold and we lost it yeah 
and then I get an email like, come on, Dan, sort it out. I really don't do production anymore. <clears throat> if you haven't noticed, we've had a producer and a producer's assistant for about eight months. I got a, like a snippy comment like, come on, Dan, sort this out. You're like, it genuinely isn't my job, mate. Yeah. But if the power goes off, it's all of our job because that's going to be shit. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm going on a little trip at the weekend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, going to Edinburgh. With my girlfriend. Oh, yeah, you're going your little weekend tripsies. Four. Uh, and we recording, are you having Monday? Or Tuesday. Not? Yeah. yeah Tuesday nice. Tuesday. Nice. <coughs> I need some time off from this. It's fucking brutal, isn't it? <laughs> Day and a half a week. <laughs> wearing me down, man. You're wearing me down. But I don't want to talk about that one because I'm also going on a trip next weekend. Okay. Um, Next weekend, I'm going away with my girlfriend, her dog. Her mum and dad and their dog. Wow. To a farm in Wales that wow. has no electricity. What? <laughs> Why? <laughs> Why the fuck are you doing that? Why? Because, do you know women, right? Yeah. They're so, always taking you to farms in Wales with no electricity. Yeah, that checks out. Classic. No, she's woman. like, oh my God, you get like an authentic 1700s experience. With a hot tub. Seventeen <laughs> hundred. Is that what she's going for? <laughs> Did I also tell you about the um the the weight thing? I haven't told you about that yet, have I? Oh, hang on. We It's on the same thing. You can't skip over the the weekend away in Wales with no electricity. Are you taking yeah. like a portable charger for your phone, I'm guessing? A hundred percent. I'll come back. I promise you I'll come straight back to that. <laughs> oh. Literally, he's going to walk into that rented cottage with all these batteries taped on him <laughs> like a fucking suicide bomber. <laughs> Adam, how are you going to do without power? Oh! I'm pocket. genuinely terrified of there being no Dongle signal. Dongle will be Right. Terrified. Terrified? In case what? In case like we get murdered on the farm and I can't ring anyone to tell them. Oh, well, that's the problem. That's what you're doing. Just checking I'm going to be all right if I'm murdered. Just checking I'm all right if I'm going to be murdered. You could do with a break, mate. Yeah. Switch your finger off. No. Got to put a fucking fire TikTok up, haven't I? The, oh, he's on I'm TikTok. Not. He's well addicted to TikTok. Follow, not, I, follow Adam's TikTok at... Adam New Comedian. Um, anyway. And the podcast TikTok. He's loving on TikTok. This, right. After saying it was for kids. So we were in the living room the other day. Pindle. And because we're going on that trip... Sam was like, oh my God, there's this amazing like, zip wire place. Would you go on it? And I was like, <laughs> I was like, I'll be scared, but I'll do it so that I don't look like a shit house in front of you and your mum and dad. So yeah, but I'm not going to be happy about it. And she was like, okay. And she was oh, hang on a minute. What do you weigh? And I was like, about 14 stone at the minute. I'm around there, put like a little bit back on. I got down to like 13, three. But if I stress eat because there's no electricity, I might be heavier by the time you strap me onto it. And I went 14 stone and she went, what is that in kilograms? And I think it's 88. Will you just check that for me, Carl? Right. It's 88, yeah, it's 88. And I went, <laughs> I went 88 and she went, oh yeah, it's fine then. And I went, well, she went, there's a maximum weight limit on the zip wires of 150 kilograms. And I went, right. <laughs> right. <laughs> you looked at me and thought I was 30 stone. <laughs> yeah. I don't know metric, but you do seem massive. <laughs> I mean, there's only so much Welsh technology can do. Can you imagine being a five foot nine? A five foot <laughs> nine? Five foot ten? You imagine that, yeah. Like, a slightly overweight man. And that being too much. Because I'm like the weight of like the average six foot man. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Can you imagine that being too much for a zip wire? But yeah, I'm going to... A 150 kilograms is what? 30, 30 stone. Well, it's, it's about uh, 27. Yeah. It's not zip wire territory, is it? No. Once you get past 20 stone. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot you can do. Yeah. There's 27 a lot you can't. 23 stone. 150 kilograms is 23 stone. Mm -hmm. It's fat. Yeah. Not necessarily. Could just be a very large person. An offensive lineman. <laughs> Yeah. Or a really, really, really tall woman. Yeah. How tall? How Nine foot tall. How <laughs> fucking tall? I don't, I really don't find it funny making jokes about tall women. Tall women. That's not good for tall people. That. No. If tall, tall, lady, tall Twitter are coming for us again. Honestly. Yeah. Tall lady Twitter. Yeah. Um, but I'm going to a farm with no lecky, but there's a hot tub. So that's good, isn't it? Little and how's tub. that? Is that you have over, to pay for the extra over coals? 
Why? Over coals. That, that's a real 17th century experience. Do oh, no, get in the hot tub. <laughs> it's in, the, in the 1600s, they were always in hot tubs. Well-known fact. They were like, Liz, the Spanish Armada's on the coast. What are you going to do about it? Like, give us fucking 10 minutes. I'm in the old hot tub. <laughs> It's a uh, wood fired. Ah, it's fuck, a wood fired hot tub. I really fucked given. my dates up on that one. The Armada was like 1583. Oh, fuck. I'm surprised Carl didn't correct you. Sorry. Ah, uh, yeah. See, that would have been funny if you'd got it right. Right, let's just cut that out. Like being in, <laughs> in the Civil War, and they'd be like, <laughs> the Parliamentarians. Bloody hell. The Parliamentarians are coming. It's not as good. All right. Um, it's a wood fired hot tub. You get one bag of wood free with your stay, and you have to bring the rest with you. So that's next week. We're going right. next Friday. But what are you taking? Wow. What wood are you taking? So I've bought an axe and I'm going to uh, Sefton Park next Thursday. Right. I'm going to cut down a few trees. Against the law? What? what? Against the law? Only if you get caught. Yeah, that's, that's true of everything, isn't it? <laughs> oh, no, that's right. It's still against the law. Yeah. You but... can't murder kids. Yeah, only if you get caught. <laughs> Otherwise, you're just active. It's against the law to steal pebbles that's, off a beach. Is that great, though? Is what? It really? Yeah, you can't steal pebbles off a beach. That's against the law. It's not, not right. stealing if you just find it, though, is it? On a beach? Yeah. The difference between finding a pebble on a beach and stealing a pebble from a beach is... You can't steal a pebble. A balaclava. <laughs> <laughs> you can't steal a pebble. Yeah. I mean, if you go to us, they like, don't find an Xbox. I can't be asked paying for wood when there's so much wood available for free. Why you don't just... you take the axe to Wales, where I think they'll not... If you're in rural Wales and you start just hacking it like... You know, in a forest, in a Welsh famous Welsh forest, because I think Sefton Park might cause you issues. No, here's the thing: so well, Adam yeah. walking around with a fucking axe in Liverpool, like, <laughs> hey, is that Adam Rowe with an axe? <laughs> fucking hell! No, here's the thing: he can't steal pebbles in. So the place, <laughs> the place <laughs> that you were going to, to give you one free bag of wood, and they're like, right, the rest of the bags. Right. You meant to go and buy the bags? Yeah, the yeah, rest yeah, of the, yeah. Either bring the rest yourself or. Fucking three grand the bag, right? No. Or that, or that, or that, About six of, quid, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but like they're meant to be like three quid in the B&M, so there's still like big mark up. Why didn't you go to B&M on the way? Because it'd be cheaper to buy an axe and just spend the day in the park. No. Oh. No, not really. How much is an axe? Well, I've already got the axe. Have you got an axe? Yeah. Where no, did you get that from? I got it from me and Q about a year ago. It's under my bed. Take oh. the axe to the people with the wood Yeah. and go, giz the fucking <laughs> wood. <laughs> yes, mate. Yes. It's quite easy, yeah? Less weight. Yeah, I've got an axe under my bed. It's next to my baseball bat. <laughs> if yeah. anyone ever breaks in, I throw them the baseball bat so it's a fair fight <laughs> and then I run at them with the axe. Wow. Cool. Hmm. Wow. Have so you like, not got any weapons? Seneca has a yeah. big screwdriver. What? Oh, a, a big screwdriver. A big screwdriver? Because <laughs> yeah. well, so unscrew- she sort the fucking table gone. out. Like. Yeah. I'm going to unscrew your shotgun. <laughs> ah, you can't shoot me now. It's all apart. Uh, I've got not on me. I, just- I am so mesmerised by... You away for the weekend with no power, just knowing how you are. And I, I just I just don't know how that's going to go. You, re- I know you've done like... A I have actually su- bought six. You've done a super... Cho- oh, my God. You've done a super... Ch- you're gonna. There's going to be so many arguments. We bought this so we could be closer to nature <laughs> and do a 17th century experience. Like, <laughs> three seconds. Six power It's going to really wind her up. Well, she asked for two power banks. She right. wanted them as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, wanks. Yeah. What happens when they run out? Well, I'm hoping the six will last the weekend. Like what, if they day, what if they don't? When yeah. when are you going away? Friday. Coming I'm back? Not. Sunday night. Oh, what are you doing with your phone to fucking blitz through six batteries? No, he's just, he doesn't know, but he's being careful, isn't he? Just being careful. Just being careful. Yeah. I cannot wait. I'm re- I don't want that to just get... I want you to come back and do the full report. Because I, I well, know I you, I, I've only, you've only done four months, but you've done a supercharged four months, haven't yeah. you, as a relationship. But it's strain that. It's strain. I know you've got to be on best behaviour because her parents are there and ah, everyone's having fun. Oh, they're not I, staying on the exact same site that we are. They're the one over because they didn't want to pay for the hot tub. And we were like, fuck you. And you can tub. bang as well. Yeah, okay. So you're not in the same 17th century house. No, it's not a house. It's like a little cabin. It's, it's also like glamping. Do you know what glamping is? Yeah. It's like glamorous camping. Yeah, thanks. Well, it's not glamorous. Thanks for that 2012. <laughs> Do you know what glamping is? It's not is? glamorous. You don't get electricity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's actually, yeah. Well, if they call it camping, it's five five pounds for a bag of wood. If they call it glamping, it's £8.50. That's yeah, the yeah. difference between... 
But I'm looking forward to it. I think I'm just going to sit in the hot tub for three days. I'm looking forward to it. I think it's going to be You're really looking forward good. to wasting the time to come back home. Yeah. I can't yeah. wait to come back. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm, do you ever have that? Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, but I can't wait yeah. to come back. <laughs> like, I'm already on that Sunday afternoon, like... I remember Joe Rogan talking about going uh, hunting because he's, he's big into hunting, isn't he? He does bow hunting and he goes with his mates. Like he's Kills elk become, and then eats them. Become, yeah, he gets tags and he does it all properly. And um, he was saying that there's been times where they're in the middle of this uh, hunt where they're out, away in like, is it the Uticon? No, what the fuck is it called? Like the the like the... The outback in North America, like into Canada and everything, and it's freezing, and you're like, you all the food you've got is in your backpack, and you've got your bow, and you and you're trying to trail some deer or something, and you're absolutely freezing, and it's all worthwhile for that moment when you get back and you get to just like have warm water because you've been so cold and it's been so bleak and you've been so hungry and the wind's been biting and your dick shriveled and your fingers hurt and it's all worthwhile. You get an elation when you get back and there's warm water and you get to lie in a bed and you're like, yeah. Or <laughs> just lay in the bed for the whole time and be like, oh, this is dead no, nice. No, because it's not the same thing. It's like wearing a coat indoors. You won't feel a benefit when you go outside. That old adage. Yeah. Do you know what it's like? So you want to feel dreadful to then feel good. It's yeah. like is when that... people say now. It's like when you don't wank for three days so that the cum feels better on Wednesday. Right. That's the one. Right. That's, That's what same. I was going to say. <laughs> when right on your mouth. When, and, uh, what you now know is that when Adam starts wanking bands, it's at the start of the week. <laughs> He really, you know, he doesn't, you know, you don't just start a wanking band on Thursday like a fucking weirdo. Do you know what it's like? It's like people now going, oh my God, thank fuck it's the weekend. And I'm like, yeah. Because like every day is the weekend right now. Yeah. Not for everyone though, eh? No, that's oh, what I mean. Yeah. That's what I mean for me. I feel like if I had a, a job where I was like, I fucking hate today. I'd be like, yes, the fucking weekend. Now I'm like, it's just the same as yesterday. Yeah. It's just called Saturday. Yeah. Right. Well, I'm really looking forward to it. I think I've taken Finn to, to vlog it. Yeah. And vlog the shagging as well. I, I'm i looking forward to looking into Finn's eyes when you <laughs> tell him he's going to a cabin in Wales to vlog you run out of like power. That what do you mean amazing. he lives in a cabin in Wales, doesn't he? Yeah. He could just drive home. I mean, he lives in <laughs> Wales, but I love it how like, real, they're all cabins. <laughs> uh, we've had a really sound uh, uh, email in from a guy called Callum who's blind in response to uh, last week's banter about... Guide dogs. Guide dogs. Because mm -hmm. I got a little bit twitchy. I was like, are we going to get shit? We didn't get shit. Mm -hmm. Everyone loved it. He says, just listen to the recent episode with Freddie. You made me piss myself laughing, and that was just the blind jokes. I'm 28 blind and have recently been accepted on the, accepted on the waiting list for my first guide dog. Unfortunately, I don't get to name the dog, so there won't be a guide dog in Liverpool named Kobe. <laughs> if you get any hate or snowflake keyboard warrior sponges about the blind stuff on the pod, please ignore it as this is support for you lot, your work uh, from a word as original. Appreciate you. Honestly, I would be well up for the lids coming and seeing what a guide dog actually does and how they are trained at work. Think it'd be hilarious watching Adam try to make a cup of tea with limited sight goggles on, although we all know he'll smash it. So uh, Callum is offering... If it was in my house and you put a blindfold on me, I could make a cup of tea, no problem. Right. Can we do that? Adam's six weeks away from being boss of being blind. <laughs> I wonder if that would be I wonder if that'd be fair because a blind person lives in their house. So they <laughs> know it but a, a blind blind person that's Famously. truly blind hasn't seen it with sight. So you that's a bit of a cheat. Blind people don't live in their neighbours. So they don't live too little clothes. <laughs> they don't live in their cousin's house. They live in their own house. Apart like, from the like, ones who like don't. Like people who can see. Yeah. They've got a home of their own. But they've never seen it. They've never. Unless you they have. Went, unless they went blind after they moved in. What your hands right. worse? Paintball and accident. Classic. What yeah. your hands worse? Always being blind or going, bl like you've turned blind? What your hands would be like it's harder? It's better to, to have loved and lost than never to have loved at all. Yeah, that's what Callum says at the end of his <laughs> email. Just re what's it like being blind? He says it's better to have <laughs> seen and lost. And never to have seen. This is just what Callum said. <laughs> Amazing. Well, that's, that's so Callum, phase. I really want. I, I re think it was Gandhi who said it. Yeah, David yeah. Gandhi. No, it was Saul Campbell. It was it was Saul Campbell. One of the two. You don't even know the difference, though, do you? It's difficult for you to tell the difference. You know, because you can't see color. I don't see creed color. 
Gandhi played centre half for Tottenham and Arsenal. Yeah. Oh, honestly, the Tottenham fans when Gandhi signed on a free contract to Arsenal. They burnt effigies of him. Yeah. And in Pakistan, they fucking ate Saul Campbell. <laughs> and if you don't think that's funny, sort your fucking life out. In Pakistan, they fucking hate Saul Campbell. If that is not the no context I'm win this week, I'm going to be very disappointed. So Ben adds to this. He's been thinking about being deaf. He says, what's the point of sign language interpreters? He's been on- thinking about being deaf. Cheers. Like- yeah, ben has, yeah. What's the point? Should ben I says... Go ben, <laughs> let me ask the fucking question. Ben says... I love, I love it when he's in this mood. It's so Keep thinking about it, getting a new car and going deaf. <laughs> where do where do blind people live? In their house? <laughs> Good to know. I've been thinking about going for a while now. Ben says, what's the point of the sign language interpreters on TV? Couldn't they just use subtitles because it's only TV they're used for? Like Netflix use subtitles, subtitles and that always works. Might be a stupid question, but it was just a thought. And I was like, yeah, that is oh, that's a good point. Yeah. Why are the... Why are the little fucking Midnight Ravers still going? Why don't they just have subtitles on? I think it's for tone. tone. Like you can write like uh Gobshite. Like let's let's say th- let's say this. Gobshite, I'd love to see let's the Let's say sign. this is John. Right. <laughs> let's say Isn't that opening the doors? John. <laughs> John. Right. What what <laughs> What a John. generic one for John. John. He's a very open person. John. Bit of a slag. John. Doesn't want to go to gay clubs. You don't want to take John to gay clubs. Yeah, let's say this is John. He's actually racist, but this doesn't work anymore. John. So this right. is John. John. Right. So if he's that a, was a He's sub- a flight attendant. John. <laughs> if, that was, if that was subtitles, it'd just say John. But if you're a sign language, let's say the person in it's shouting, then you can be a bit more, John! Use capitals. <laughs> Subtitles are normally capitals anyway. They just capitalise everything. No, they don't. No, they don't. A lot of the time they do. No, they don't. No, because no. it's harder for the human brain to read a, f- a word no, full of... Don't. That's why road signs are lowercase. Well, sometimes they do anyway. <coughs> Have we got... Is it? Is it just... <laughs> Fine, yeah, they do. Yeah, it's not true, but good on you, Adam. Um, John! <laughs> John! How did he do a whisper? <laughs> Little John? <laughs> That's for Robin Hood. All right, couldn't resist. Start dancing, John. <laughs> John. You gotta watch. You gotta John. watch how you dance, have not you? If you if you're deaf, you gotta watch how you dance. Like if you just get really into the clapping, like <laughs> there's a guy called John going, what, <laughs> what? This happens every wedding. <laughs> what? <laughs> Trying to fuck uh, a bridesmaid here. Eh? YMCA. <laughs> John. <laughs> John. <laughs> <laughs> At the start of YMCA, every every chorus to YMCA. John, John Matthew MC- Card. Oh my god! <laughs> right, well, Ben, I hope that's answered your fucking question. What was the question? Oh, the deaf one. Um, <coughs> we have had a question in from a guy called Nicholas. Hey, up, lids! I've seen that there is going to be a new Ruffle Comedy venue opening in Sheffield. Wondering if you two will be on the bill sometime in the near future. As an OG listener, I've always had the impression Sheffield is not one of your favourite gigs. Don't blame you, Snake Pass is fucking nightmare. I always thought it was a strange one, as there is loads of music going on events-wise, but never understood why comedy has been left behind. I know there has been a few comedy gigs at the Lead Mill, but as this is a historic music venue for Comedy has never really taken off. Do you think this may change with the introduction of Ruffle? Never been a huge fan of live comedy myself, but as a massive fan of the pod, will Defo give this new venue a go if you're on? My tour show is going to be at the Lead Mill in April next year. That'll go on sale soon. I probably won't end up playing Ruffle uh, just because uh, I had a falling out with the owner a while back, and I'm not going to slag him off because he's a boxer. So I think we can talk about Lee Jones, you know. I was thinking about as this question came in, I was like, he, the Sheffield thing, the reason I put it in is quite a shop question, but we get loads of feedback saying people love talking about uh, us talking about comedy. And this isn't just about material. This is specifically about Sheffield. Sheffield is one of the weirdest cities for circuit comedy in the country. 
it's at the same time really well sort of served by, um, and I love the fact that Nicholas has no idea the Memorial Hall has got a has, comedy club. Has had last in. laugh. Last laugh's been going for twenty years in Sheffield Town Centre. Toby Foster uh, runs it, owns it. He did. He does BBC Radio Sheffield. I think he'll he's know quite, Toby Foster's name if he's from Sheffield. Yeah. So they've run a gig there that has been successful. I don't think it's uh, as busy as it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I think they've run it in a very weekend comedy club fashion, haven't they? Like, we've talked about it before. It's very much like big parties, and I think they've lost some of the regular punters, and it, it's it's not as busy as it was. No, and there's also a, a, a little bit of... Uh, and I, I don't want to speak too out of turn here, but there's a little bit of the old sort of jongler's booking policy there of there's some acts who are friends with the bookers and the owners and the bookers and the owners are like, these are my friends and I need to keep giving them work, who are just those bitter comics we've mentioned before who are a bit dead behind the eyes and just don't do as well as they used to. Like You can then go on, you can get, then go on and have, uh, I've been on bills there where you're like, this is lightning. This is a fire bill. Because yeah, yeah. Toby Foster, when he's tuned in... Is phenomenal. Is phenomenal. When he can't be asked, sometimes you can tell personally, as someone who's watched him for 20 years, when he can't totally be asked. But when they've got, like, Rob Rouse and Andrew Bird and me on a bill, I'm like, this is as good as any bill, uh, bill I'll be on. But there aren't loads of them. There's more I've when you're on a bill going, it's not great. I've definitely told you this. I don't know whether I've told you this on pod. But last time or the time before I was there, I went outside to go on my phone because you don't get any signal in the Memorial Hall. It's a beautiful building. And Toby come out to have a ciggy. And he was talking about like, you know, oh, the lads in Liverpool, are, oh, well, they're doing really well. He's 40. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, oh, thank you. Um, that's the my thing is, it is, that is one of the, it's absolute, ask any comedian to do an impression of Toby Foster. Oh, thank you. Thanks very much, thank you. They do their weird Bernard Manning, which is more Toby Foster. Um, and he was like, he basically sort of was like, how do I get this place to be what Hot Water is? We're going to start filming the gigs. We're going to start doing this. And I was like, well, can I be brutally honest with you? And I won't say it was on the bill because it's not fair. But I was like, look at the bill. Like, you've got me in the middle and I'm the best act on the bill. And you've got your mate closing and your mate opening. And yeah, it, it's it, like, they. And he, he was like, yeah, well, you know, they've played here for a long time. I was like, there comes a point, though, where you've got to put your business over loyalty because they're just not doing the business anymore. But if you have massive parties in from Barnsley, Rotherham, and it's feisty, it's easy to be a defensive booker, isn't it? To go, oh, well, they just, they all of these acts do a job. And do but a they job. don't. Do a job. No, 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 no. Can no, go no. so wrong. No, I'm because I'm not really having that because I'm not talking Mate, about Mate, I'm acts. not defending that stance. No. I think that's how they look at it. No, yeah, but... That's wrong, because I'm not talking about the act who have been doing the same material for 20 years and still do the job. I'm talking about the ones who don't anymore. So why are they booking them? Because, because they're mates. Because it's loyalty. And I, right, I sort right. of understand it, but they're not. It, it's not like they're going, well, this guy's amazing at dealing with crowds. He isn't anymore. Like, th those acts, I totally understand why they're still yeah. booked. Because they go on into a room full of stags and go, hey, what, it's Jono's stag, dude. Jono's a cunt. And everyone goes, Bleh. and they've still got the energy and... And the, the delivery to pass that off, but the people who are just going on and doing jokes about their wife, who they've been divorced from for 12 years, and they can't really be asked. <laughs> My kids, five and seven. Stupid names. She's got a degree. <laughs> um, I told yeah, it, it feels like we're being a little bit, we're probably flying quite close to the sun on this one in terms of like, we're specifically talking about clubs. I have had some amazing times at the last laugh. It's and I think the less car is a great gig. But there have been some times when I'm like, this isn't good, this. I'm I'm not slagging them off. I'm really not, because I do understand it. And this is not something that I haven't said to, to, to them. them. Do you know what I mean? I'm not I'm not talking behind anyone's back and I love playing there and I will I'll play it again next year if they'll have me. Like they've, they've <laughs> it, been very territorial though, haven't they, as well? Which I yeah. never sits well. You my, can't have my, a gig there. You can't have a gig there. We've got a gig here. You're like, it's a city that serves hundreds and thousands I, of people. I really, really, really like Toby, and I would like that gig to rejuvenate and run forever because it, it deserves it because of the room and the decades of work he's put into it. 
But there is a danger that a club like Ruffle could open and go, we're a bit fresher. Like, a slightly more... He's tenacious, is Lee. Yeah. Like, I, I, I've had a fallen out with him, but he, he's, he's... He needs to calm down on the internet, man. He needs to calm down because people get chippy with him. And it's the initial response is, yeah, don't worry about it. We'll do what we do. You do what we do. To be fair, he's got a very successful model and it's part hot water and he's given it everything. And he and I've played that gig in um, Newcastle Underline. You hear Purpose Built Comedy Club just outside Stoke and you think, well, that will be shit. Yeah. And it is fucking great it looks good it's smart it's nice sight lines it's 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 the way they've done the decor is individual to it they are really going to work it out they've now got preston derby they've got sheffield and they're they're expanding but he's so defensive and there's always that line of like you you see it. he's never like He's never threatening people, but it's always like, yeah, all right, well, we'll do things how we want to do them. You do th things how you want to do them. And if you want to discuss this somewhere, we can arrange to meet up. And you're like, <laughs> Lee, you cut, you're a former boxer. You can't do passive aggressive. I'll meet you around the back of the bike sheds yeah, if you don't fucking like what I in, do on Facebook. In a rare defense of Lee, because as I say, there was a bit of spike in his head between me and him. He, he does openly admit that he's a bit tetchy because he's been punched in the head a lot. Do you know what I mean? Oh, well, that's fine then, isn't it? That does affect your mood if you're there. Uh... He's been abused, grade B. <laughs> is that grade B abused? Yeah. Double job is... It doesn't count. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, double saying it. Oh, She's yeah. got guns. I don't think it counts of abuse if you, you get guns, in the ring with another fight. knives, fire. baton, and then punching. He, he runs really successful comedy clubs, but he has been hit with a baton. <laughs> and that was the end of his career. It was a weird fight. Uh, I just... For Sheffield... I think the ideal situation is, because the Lead Mill are a, a music venue nightclub that do some really good alternative to the sort of Friday, Saturday night, yeah. last laugh. And I, I the, the the guys that run it, I think Red Redman's involved and, yeah. and they run it. The one on a Wednesday is a superb gig. Loads of students. They can live with each other. I think Roffle, the ideal is that Roffle start in Sheffield and it's close to last laugh and they ignite the energy in Sheffield with comedy and in maybe get a bit of a scene going with younger comics. Cause one of the problems with cities like Sheffield is there isn't a lot of like places where a young community of comics like happened with me when I was growing up as a comic in Manchester, like you, when all of you guys were starting in Liverpool, uh -huh. that really cultivates a scene. And then five years down the line, it's like a youth system at a football club. You've got some first team players and it helps the, the potential problem is going to be they fuck each other over and it gets nasty. So it's going to yeah. be an interesting one to watch. Yeah. If you play there, you can't play here. That's... If you play there, you can't play here. Right. Yeah. And if it does kick off and they fight, I would like to see that. I'd like to be booked in yeah. Sheffield yeah. to see that fight. We'll promote it. Have a way of promotions. <laughs> Do you not think you could sort it with Ruffle? Because he, he, he seems... He seems pretty, it's weird because he was weird with me when I first played there because he sent me an email about how you enter the venue and I just went th up the main entrance and me meeting him after people had been gone, oh, he's a bit, uh, he's interesting, bit spiky, sound, good gig, but a bit like, you've got to be careful. I don't care, I've been doing it long enough. I walked in and he went, the first time I've ever met him, he went, ah, I see you did not read my email. I do not like comedians to come in the main entrance I think it looks bad. We were within earshot of customers. You feel like going, this looks worse though, doesn't it? You bollocking oh, yeah. your opening act. I probably could fix it with them, but I can't be asked. Do you want to do it here? Do you want to do it? Lee, if you want to book me, send me an email and I'll think about it. <laughs> I think he'll think about it. And if he doesn't want to book you, where can he meet you outside? Um, you can meet me <laughs> for a fight. Oh, a fight. A fight. Where? Uh, on the Cindy. On Cindy. Outside Cardinal Heena. Outside Cardinal Heena. But I'm bringing yeah. guns, yeah. other people. Some of your Muslim friends. Fire. Yeah. Why wouldn't some of your Muslim friends? Because that's what you learned about in, you know, Ramadan. It was a callback. Oh. Anyway. All right, cool. I feel like I knew what you were doing there, but I felt like they didn't. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on callback for like, Just, Just clarify that. Okay. And let's move on. Okay. Break time. Let's get Uncle Roger. In. <laughs> Uncle Roger. Uncle Roger. From YouTube. You want to keep talking or stop talking? Hey, 
listen to this. This podcast, have a word, yeah, is sponsored by Beer52.com. And we have been for about a year now. They are our OG sponsor. And I've got to tell you about them. If you don't know who they are, they are the number one craft beer discovery club in the UK. What's a craft beer discovery club, Adam? Well, I'll fucking tell you, mate, okay? What they do is they help you discover craft beer. They send you different craft beers every month from all over the world. Different themes every month as well. You might get a month worth of South African beers. You might get some from Argentina the next month. You might get some from South Korea or something. All over the world, they'll help you discover the best craft beers that you've never heard of. And here's the best thing. Because you're a listener to this podcast, not only do you get a free case of eight beers and an award-winning beer magazine for free just by going to beer52.com slash word. All you do, pay the postage and packaging, eight free beers, free beer magazine, and a little tasty snack as well. And also, it helps us out. You support our sponsors. They support us. This thing can keep going. We can keep the have a weird gravy train on the fucking track. So go to beer52.com slash word right now and get yourself some bevies for nothing. (laughs) What a tall... Hey! <laughs> Welcome! Welcome. Oh, but, oh, you doing it? Oh, okay. No, you, uh, no, you're... You, do you know what? Like, we've never done it before. You, 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 you. Uh, hi, welcome back. There you go. That was it. Cool. We Good. have got Nigel Ng. Yes. In the building. Really lent on the Ng. Press the button, Dan. Oh, sorry. I'll be applause button. Yeah. Thank yeah. you, thank you. Thanks for coming in. <laughs> of course, man. Yeah. It I'm a fan of the pod. Yeah. Confuses me having a Malaysian <laughs> friend called Nigel. Yeah, well, <laughs> we fucked up, man. We, we chose all these old school British names because we were colonized by uh, Britain, right? England, I guess, at the time. And then you guys left us in 1957. So all our names are still from that era, you know? Yeah. Like Harold's, Collins. I know Asian Keith's, <laughs> Asian Nigel's. A lot of Asian. My brother's name is Gary. So. <laughs> Malaysian Gary sounds yeah. like a, uh, sounds like an amazing drug. I, I wish. Have you ever had a, a Malaysian Gary? Okay. A dream of a Malaysian Gary. You should come back and colonize us now, so we can have like Emma, so Sophia, you know, cool names. <laughs> Zachary. Yeah. So Malaysia's just like one great big old people's home, but with loads of young people in it. <laughs> Amazing. Charles. What a thing to leave. What a mm. legacy to leave. Just loads of blokes <laughs> called Gary and Keith. I know. Thank you, the British Empire. <laughs> Thank you so much. So are you telling me right now there could be a baby being born in Malaysia and a Malaysian woman is looking at it and going, Keith? <laughs> It could be Winston. Because that's not even happening here anymore. (laughs) Baby Keith. Oh, um, how are you? How how has the pandemic treated you? And you were saying before you enjoyed your your train journey up because you're like in traveling again. Yeah, this is my first train I've taken since the pandemic, man. You've been uh, abroad, haven't you? Didn't you go to Sweden for a bit? I went. I went there, you know, uh, just to podcast with my uh, Swedish podcast co-host. So Evelyn sometimes, Mock. Flow. yeah, Evelyn Mock, very funny. You didn't just go. You know what? There's a pandemic. <laughs> I'm going to fucking Sweden. Well, like there, there was. I, I like the style. Like you know. Yeah, it's for work. Right. Okay. Yeah, fair and restaurants, but mostly work. <laughs> 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 they never had a lockdown, you know. But yeah, they yeah. Just, so they just kept it open, and it sort of panned out. Did, did they do that all the way through? Because mm-hmm. at one point it looked like they were gonna go. It, woo. it got more and more restrictive. I think now there's an 8 p.m. curfew. Right. But when I went, everything was still open till 10. It was nice. Everything here was closed. There's never yeah, been a full know. lockdown in Sweden. They've never done a full no, lockdown, have they? No. Yeah. And are they okay? Nope. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Is it? Are they in the shit now? Yeah. Yeah. It's tough now. Now, now that we are coming out of it, they are really struggling. Oh, but wow. I imagine. Did you feel safe over there? Cause like, I mean, from COVID or from, from co- other crime? <laughs> <laughs> I felt safe from knife crime. <laughs> so these people don't look like they'll stab you, you know? They're too rich and beautiful to, you know, carry knives around, I think. <laughs> That's our problem. Yeah. yeah. Too There's too many, too many mingers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too many poor mingers. You haven't got any money. <laughs> I'm gonna stab someone. Yeah, never, run, you, run you, corn you, on the other hand. <laughs> you never get stabbed by a 10, do you? Yeah, <laughs> no. no. I'll happily be stabbed by a 10, right? That's as close as a 10 will ever get to me. That's a nice length distance away. No, but like, did you not like give a shit that they were open and stuff? Cause like at the start of the pandemic, we've talked about this a lot. Mm-hmm. I shit myself, like a bit of health anxiety. I was like, fuck, I'm staying in. I'm not going near me dad. I'm just gonna 
chill. I, I need to chill a bit. I think that was April till July of 2020. Yeah, that was and then your freak out people period. People survived it, and I was like, "I'll be okay." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then, and Sweden too. They 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 kind of naturally socially distance as well. That's their stereotype, right? They're not yeah, very yeah. friendly, sociable people. And there are so few people there. You know, in Stockholm, it's just there's so much space everywhere. It's it's hard to contract anything. Yeah, in Sweden, I think the perception over here is maybe this is just mine. That the the all the Scandinavian countries are really like sensible people. And just yeah. quite, so if they're like, there's a pandemic, so you don't want to shut any shops, you've just got to stand a bit apart from everyone and like, of course I will, that's that's just sensible. And then they do it. And over here, mm. I was like, you don't tell me not yeah. to lick my nana. <laughs> Fuck you, Bojo. I'll lick all the pensioners I fucking want, you fucking Tory. I just, that, it was, the, 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 over there, they were like, well, of course, you just give everyone the distance and wear a mask. But obviously we don't want the fucking... Ikea to be closed, that was so bad. I'm sorry. It was racist, but it was white on oh, white you racism. You stopped at licking scouse yeah. hands. Oh. There was a peak and you were like, no, nope, I can top this. Yeah. Keep tagging it, keep tagging it. You, you've had quite a spectacular year though, online with the content you've been putting out. Oh, thanks, as man. your character, yeah. Uncle Roger. Yeah. Now, yeah. I've got a question for you. I've got a question. Right. Okay. I often, just to myself, I could be in. I watch your videos all the time. Uh -huh. I love them. I'll be in the house on my own, having a shit, cooking, and I will just do an Uncle Roger impression. Now, is that <laughs> racially insensitive, given the fact that he's fictional? I don't think so. I okay. think everybody should do any accent they want. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, but you can't do it on YouTube. <laughs> Is that the you, difference? You, you said worse things on this pod. Yeah, a hundred percent. Right? Today. Said, oh, yeah, really? He has, he, he, has, he has watched. <laughs> a lot of the guests come on and go, oh, I'm a big fan. It turns out, you yeah, know, Nigel has watched. <laughs> no, I'm a big fan because you say those crazy things. <laughs> you know, where, where else can you get fucking the queen on BBC Sounds? You're not going to get that. <laughs> no, no, we no. can pitch it. <laughs> I did pitch a sketch recently to a um, producer I'm talking to. Uh, it's called Vegan Slave Owner. And <laughs> <laughs> slapping a sausage it. roll out of a kid chained yeah. to a radiator, you know. I think it's funny, <laughs> but nobody, nobody wanted it. They're like, it's a little risky, Nigel. It's a little risky. We'll make it. <laughs> Here <laughs> here it comes. Here comes. The, new, the Runcorn's <laughs> Rupert Murdoch over here. This is... A really dodgy empire he sees before him. <laughs> oh, and then it's, it's a mock interview style and the person goes, slavery gets a bad rap, you, but you have to have slaves of different races. That's, that's the solution. That's the solution. That is the solution. Yeah. yeah. Uh, equal opportunity problem. slaves. Equal opportunity slaves. Yeah. Always difficult when you're talking about race and then yeah. solution, isn't it? That's yeah. always, <laughs> start. always, always a little nervy when people are like- Let's start hiring slaves the way Mock the Week booked their lineups. <laughs> <laughs> One of each. <laughs> Oh, this, this, this slave had a great Edinburgh. Let, let's get him up there. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> to talk. <laughs> Everyone's like, maybe we should just stop laughing before we try and end our career. Oh, wow, wow, wow. Uh, that honestly um, sounds like a fucking unreal sketch to me. Yeah. I'd be quite happy to And start. they went, oh. They're like, but aren't you at the point where you're just making your own stuff now? Haven't you? It feels like we've cracked the code a little bit because mm. without agents, without sponsors at the start, we did this, we got chemistry, we've got like our best mate, we've got producers, <laughs> that's so harsh on Finn. <laughs> yeah. And we've got Finn. But we've <laughs> got above like that point where you go, oh, now we've got the funding to do what we want to do and only on a small scale, but we're getting there. Mm -hmm. Surely you're now at the point with everything you've done with Uncle Roger and all your other YouTube stuff that you're like, oh, you don't like the sketch. Well, fuck it. I'm going to make the sketch. So like, you've yeah. got a platform. Yeah, I plan to. I'm just also occupied with Uncle Roger videos. It's just a time thing. I need to find, instead of me shooting it by myself, everything, I need to find like a someone to shoot it for me, you know, a production company, whatever. But yeah, I can no, you need make a, it. You need a car. Somewhere. You need a car. That's what you need. Yeah, yeah. But I can't, and I plan to. And I plan, <laughs> nobody's commissioning this. Nobody's commissioning <laughs> vegan slave owner, the sketch. 
sounds so funny. Even my podcast co-host Evelyn, who likes everything I do, she was like, "Yeah, let's not pitch that to Comedy Central." Okay. Oh. Yeah, but that's basically you get to a point mm-hmm. where you're Dave Chappelle. And you've got the following and like, he can just go, yeah, I am going to do this. Like every step of that ladder is, oh, I can't, I want to do that. I want to do that sketch, but I'm worried someone is going to, oh, you can't do this or representation or like it, you, the dream is to get to that point where you're like, oh, go fuck yourself. This yeah. is exactly the sketch I want to do because people want it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, had, we had Chris Washington in a couple of weeks ago mm-hmm. and he, uh, he pitched to Comedy Central a while back the idea to, for him and a co-host, which in his pitch, he pitched me to go and review all the best takeaways in the country. And Comedy Central were like, yeah, maybe we'll think about maybe at some point, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think we're just going to make it. Do it, yeah. <laughs> we're just going to take Chris in a van and give Carl a camera and just go to every chippy we can, we can get recommended by people in different cities. Yeah, And I'm so thick that I'm, I think it's a great idea because I want some takeaway. That's great. <laughs> I mean, part of it is the project and part of it is like the journey together mm. and trying to put out um, exciting content. But at the same time, I'm like, I fucking love kebabs, so... Yeah, and I think when you make it yourself, there, there's so much freedom to yeah. it. You do whatever the fuck you want. You say whatever you want. You don't have to be like, oh, I need, will this get past the, the producer, the commissioner? Oh, yeah. my God, yeah. That's why we keep refusing to join a network with this. Mm. People are like, we'll get you on a network. And we're like, yeah, but then we've got a boss. <laughs> and that's, oh, I see, I see. And, and then yeah. I can't do Uncle Roger on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> you can do it in this episode. Let, let's all do it. Let's can all I? do it. Yeah. Can, oh, I don't give a shit. Been given the time, pass. Yeah. It, Adam loves it. He's like, brilliant. Someone from a different ethnicity than mine. And it's like a fucking free pass to be like, yay. It's fine. Maybe maybe Nigel should do it first. And then, I try and then you're copying then, aren't you? Okay. Got it. Yeah, you're not racist. You're an impressionist. Yeah. <laughs> it's not like racist. Michelangelo. It's talent. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Was he impressionism? No. I can't. No. I wasn't an impressionist. I was the. Oh, I was yeah. off the court <laughs> to the side. I took a shot. A bad one. Is he not an impressionist? He painter? wasn't an impressionist. No. no. Who, name an impressionist then. Monet. <laughs> I thought you were going to say that. Yeah. Jim Mate, Carrey or if something. Every, if anyone does that. <laughs> um, uh, okay. All right. Um, could well, you say something as Uncle Roger and then I copy it? Yeah, yeah. Is that okay? Hi, uh, Uncle Roger just got to run con everywhere so shit. What a shithole. Hi, uh, something. Oh like my that. God. I'm terrified. <laughs> I can tell Nigel's really warm into Runcorn. Yeah. <laughs> anyone anyone picking up the really subtle hints that he's I, thinking about getting a second property? You, you can't even get sparkling water here, you know? Yeah, you asked for sparkling water when you arrived. Haven't, do you know what? I do uh, want to take the what? piss out of it, but sparkling water with a bit of ice and lemon. I'm into that. Yeah. What, it like tastes sparkling like water static. from a, a lukewarm bottle? Nah. It tastes like telly static. <laughs> It I want to. I do want to take the piss out of it, but mm. it's actually really lovely with ice and lemon. <laughs> yeah. Well, you've lost your platform to take the piss out of it. <laughs> yeah, fucking really Tory. Unless it's a summer day at the tennis club, <laughs> and then I love a Perrier. <laughs> oh, I got on, one. Just go on, Adam. One. Um, right. Okay. Hiya. Here we okay. Go. Right, good start. Yeah. Hi, uh, Uncle Roger. <laughs> it's Uncle Roger. Oh. Yeah, doing well. Uncle good. Roger just got a con. Everything shit. Have what podcast? <laughs> Hiya. My toes, my toes are killer. I think he was going to start doing the Patreon advert. <laughs> Patreon. <laughs> Have a word, Paul. <laughs> um, is that okay? Yeah, it's not bad. It's not bad. Play the clap and play is the it, applause is it, for him. Is it fair to say, Nigel, that uh, when you go on stuff, people want you to do the voice of Uncle Roger? But I don't mm. think on a lot of interviews you'll ever get the person doing the interview <laughs> yeah. doing the voice back at you. And that's yeah. really where we differentiate ourselves <laughs> from a lot of the internet. <laughs> oh, that's good. Let me do my version. <laughs> <laughs> this is how you should do it. Yes. <laughs> oh, what are you doing? I was, I was, I was <laughs> yeah. What was that? Yeah, yeah I, was, I was like, <laughs> like what? That, that's that's the offensive that? one. My, that, eye, that my eyes so were watering. <laughs> my eyes were watering, so I was going, oh, that's an eye-watering moment. And then I feel like I've made everything worse. 
Well, short one today. Not after, <laughs> not after we do a 13 minute section, but I think it's best. Uh, should, we, should we do the apology while we're doing the episode? <laughs> yeah, I just want to say. Really do sorry. the apology as Uncle Roger. That's what you should. Uncle Roger, one apologize. Yeah. So sorry, hi, uh, niece and nephew. You get offended niece. for what? So pussy, so pussy. Niece and nephew be crying all the time. That was really offensive. No, no, no. I hear. The, the more he does it, the more it does become offensive. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, thanks for traveling up for this. <laughs> <laughs> you were like, oh, God, it's great to travel for comedy again. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, holy shit. And so you live in Malaysia as well. Are you half Malaysia, half London? That was and a hard left. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> what, what a segue. Do? What do you want to do? No, it's fine. What do you want to do? I mean, we can go around till everyone's racially insensitive. Finn, your turn. <laughs> Although you're half Malaysian, probably. Uh, uh, no, I, I grew up in Malaysia. I'm from there. Right. I'm not half Malaysian. I'm full Malaysian. Are oh, you full Malaysian? Yeah, Sorry. yeah, yeah. And then went, I went to the U, I went to uni in the US and then moved here in 2015. What Good. university did you go to? Northwestern. Where's near, that? Near Chicago. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's okay. It's I feel right. like I knew that, actually. I think, because, yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we've met before, Adam. So. Once or twice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and Adam o opens those conversations with, where did you go to university in the, in the States? Oh, yeah. Northwestern. <laughs> what did you study? Okay. What did you study? Uh, engineering and philosophy. And just did one of the I did it for a while as a, as a day job, but comedy is more fun, right? Yeah. Yeah. You did philosophy? No, no, engineering. <laughs> philosophy, no, no jobs there. That's a day job. It's a philosophy. Sat thinking. Mm. <laughs> what is the nature of this table? Do right. they? How do you build a bridge? But what's the point? <laughs> <laughs> that's the problem. Do they cross over? one side to the other. <laughs> it's all very logical. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Well, it's yeah. all very rigorous, scientific, no you know. Yeah. Yeah. Just me and you. <laughs> I was like episode four all over again. It was just me and you on that. <laughs> I think we forgot what was happening there. Yeah. That's going to be a brutal edit for Carl as he's like, there's literally two conversations there's going two on. Two conversations on one screen. <laughs> uh. Did you ever get into the uh, c campus sports and everything? Did you ever go and watch? Because Northwestern got a pretty decent college football team. Mm -hmm. do you, is it really rah rah? And do he, they he was an offensive linesman. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 I, was, yeah. Uh, I went to a few. It wasn't It wasn't my thing. I was spending. I was. I already started doing stand up at that time. So when people are socializing with the football games, I was taking the train from the suburb of Chicago down to Chicago to do an open mic. Oh wow! So I started oh, doing stand up in 2011. What's the stand up scene like in Chicago? It's It's nice. It's growing. I would say it's similar to like Bristol vibes. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. people are friendly. They know each other, but eventually people move. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. New York or L. A. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, so when I, like whenever that. I think of America, obviously Texas is now becoming a bit of a, a comedy hub because yeah. of all the people that are moving there. Woo! Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but when I think of like, oh, I want to go to America and do stand up, I think I'll go to New York for the week and I'll go to LA for the week and then fuck off. But I sort of forget that every city in America has probably got a fucking great comedy club mm -hmm. or two or three where it's probably worth checking out. Do you know what I mean? Chicago's massive as well, isn't it? Yeah. Chicago's a huge city. Like it, it, you can't be underestimated. Like it's, is it the third biggest city in the States? It must be close. <sighs> is it? <laughs> like it is, it is pretty oh, massive. You have a Jamie, is Finn your Jamie? On and they're the both our Jamie yeah. really, but Finn's editing at the minute. So Carl's. Oh. Carl's like a, a third host that we get to check stuff while we... Uh, Correct, Daniel. It is the third largest city in the United States. Oh. New York, LA, Chicago. Yep. Yeah. Um, what, what, and what do they do? You just get five minutes? Do you, like, is it exactly like... like uh, open mics there, let me think. No, you, you, you go, go to a place, if the open mic starts at eight, I would go to a place at seven just to start queuing to, to sign up for spots. And I, I'm already like, it, it's already 10, 15 people in, people in you know? Yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's very competitive. You have there. to queue to get on. Yeah, to sign up. Yeah, have it, I not told you about those spots in New York? Have you done gigs in New York? Uh, yeah, a couple. Nothing so, big though. Wh when I when I went out to New York, I'm sure I've mentioned this to you before, and it will have been on this, obviously. But um, the way they do it over there, like I book most of the people on the bill, or everyone on the bill, it is you know you've got your 15 minute spot or your 10 minute whatever you've been given, mm -hmm. and then they have it the thing called the check spot. So you mm. people turn up at seven for the show that starts at eight and they put their names down. So let's say it's you, me and Nigel and you're there first, I'm there second, he's there third. Then 
at the end of the show, the compare goes on and goes, guys, that's the bill. Thank you very, very much. The waitress is going to come around and give you all your bills and make sure you pay for it. While you do that, some of New York's up-and-coming comics are going to come on and do five minutes each. Uh, the first one mm -hmm. is Dan Nightingale. Yeah. The check spot. So yeah. you I, got I, I honestly thought it was like, oh, because you're getting checked. It's because they're paying the check. Yeah, yeah. So you go <sighs> on, do five minutes. And obviously, if you're on first on that, then you've still got a full audience, but they are all paying their checks. Mm -hmm. If you're on second, a third of them have gone. If you're on third, two thirds have gone. And then four, fifth, six, and seven, they, you, they can all stay as long as they want the audience. And as, men, as long as there's an audience there, whoever's on the list of check spots gets to go on. But you have to get there at seven and you have to stay in the building until mm. you spot. If you leave, you lose your place in the queue. Wow. Yeah. That is. We never did check spots in Chicago, but you have, you have to stay in the building. Yeah. It's, right. it's tough. And I could tell, really tell, that the comics doing those check spots hated me so much. Yeah. Because everyone else on the bill is a New York comic. Uh -huh. And I'd got booked at these New York comedy clubs because a couple of New York comics that I've worked with or met on the internet or whatever had gone, I'll put a word in for you. So I've turned up as this British cunt who've never done a gig over there. An They'd immigrant. Give me a 15 minute An spot. immigrant. Mm -hmm. yeah. Coming over here, <laughs> taking their spots. <laughs> Literally, yeah. And you could tell her looking at me like, why have you got 15 minutes at nine o'clock and I'm going on at half 11 to do five minutes while people are paying for chicken wings. Because I'm fucking rowy bad, mate. <laughs> <laughs> wow, what a strange... Like, it's totally different, in it? I mean, London probably has gigs that are a little like that. But even, like, yeah. Manchester, we've got Beat the Frog. That's the biggest open spot night in the country, I think, numbers-wise. Like, it, there's 270 people there on a Monday. Mm -hmm. There's very few new comedians are going to play to that many people. They're booked four months in advance three months in advance. Yeah, it's hard to get on, but no one has to queue outdoors. And like, it's not, it's weirdly still like a, a, a different version of the weekend spots. The weekend spots are booked four months in advance. Mm -hmm. Like it's still like the normal booking process to be actually stood in a queue waiting to go on maybe fifth while people are paying the bill. What a fucking <sighs> mental setup. It's really strange. But weirdly, I always thought, yeah, and I'm sure you're the same with, because <clears> the, Majority of your comedy career has been spent over here, hasn't it? Yeah, I would say so, yeah. Yeah. So, like, I think we get in our own heads a lot over here about, like, there can't be any disturbance. Theatre style sitting, everyone face the front and shut the fuck up. And mm -hmm. when I was going to New York and people were like, oh, they serve drinks while you're on, I was yeah. like, oh, that's going to be a nightmare. And it just isn't. Yeah. Because the audience get used to the fact, oh, yeah, every now and then a waitress walks in front of me and they just do that. Yeah. Because they get used to concentrating on you. Yeah. I would say if that... you compared, you get used to that anyway. When when people are like, oh, we're not going to start the show yet because people are coming in at the bar, you're like, I'm the yeah. compare. It's fine. You can deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Sorry, Nigel. I, I think it's better that we don't have a theater style set, set up because that's that's how you get the wanky Edinburgh show because people go to, go to it thinking it's theater. Yeah, but if yeah. there's waitresses walking around, it make, gives it a more casual vibe. You can't just talk about being molested by your dad. <laughs> <laughs> Great A. Great A molesting there. So what's gigging in Malaysia? What's gigging in uh, in Asia like? I mean, is the obviously if you're doing one-man shows, it's way different from mm -hmm. your Chicago days. But yeah. what's the difference with the audiences over there? Because I've never played that part of the world. Uh, sense of humor is different. Well, to be fair, if you went and did it, you'd be playing to expats. Yeah. And then I think you would you won't feel as much of a difference. Expats there, a lot of them, I think majority of them will be British. A so lot of them will be scousers on the run. <laughs> yeah. Real talky Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> what? That's some grade A fucking on the run, isn't it? <laughs> Lad, we've yeah. got to go Malaysia. <laughs> on the swim. Uh, what was the question again? <laughs> on the swim. Uh, what's the Malaysian comedy scene like? Oh, yeah. Um, for you guys, it won't be that much different. Yeah. You know, I've played to expats in Malaysia before and I'm like, fucking hell, all the jokes still, my Butlins references still flew, you know? Like, Whoa. <laughs> Doing your Greg's bit in Malaysia. <laughs> <laughs> Loving it. But when I play it, because it's an Asian face, I draw like, um, and my fan base, a lot of them are Malaysian too. So I draw a local crowd. And that's when it gets tricky because I haven't lived there for a while. Yeah. And half the references won't work, half the jokes. Take a take a 20, 30 percent cut in terms of funniness. Yeah. You know? So that's something I still have to have get you better at. Had a chance yet to do sort of shows with the profile you've now amassed. Because obviously that has largely been amassed over the past year. Yeah. When everything's yeah. been shut down. Yeah. So have you managed to do a lot of Nigel Ng as seen on Uncle Roger videos? Like 
to your own fans yet? Not yet, not yet. <gasps> Most things aren't open yet, right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, if, it, if something's happened in the pandemic, it's really weird coming out of it. Like I went into the pandemic doing okay and uh -huh. we're coming out of it because this is doing well going, oh, things are going to be, it's interesting. Yeah, no, I'd not even factored that in. I was like, yeah. oh yeah, you've been smashing it for ages. It's not been that long, has it? It's, it's a, yeah, a, no. a full year of growth. Like, Well, Uncle Roger only blew up in July. Yeah. So it's not been a, even a year yet. It's, so it's, I, don't, I don't know. I hope people come out and want to see me as myself. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I expect that, Uncle Roger on stage. I, I, 600 Adams, dude. <laughs> do the voice. <laughs> You're not doing it. I'll do it. Uncle <laughs> Roger. Fucking <laughs> brilliant. Are you going to give them that though? Like, for example, this mm -hmm. is a, a slightly different thing. Well, obviously, Paul Smith, who hosts, hosts Top Water Comedy Club in Liverpool, which is mm -hmm. over there, by the way. That's why I'm pointing. Uh, <laughs> over there. Because um, he knows uh -huh. that he's known for crowd work from all of his videos. When he does his tour show, he compares his support act on. So he uh -huh. goes on, does 20 minutes of crowd work, gets his support act to do 20 minutes, has a break, and then goes on and he's like, I've done my crowd work, I can now do my hour. And he, no, he does that because he's like, that's what they've come for. They'll stay for the hour and they'll love it, but mm -hmm. I need to at least give them that. Are you going to maybe go on stage? Because I, I remember Andrew Schultz, when he came to London, he had this thing for a while where, and we're going to get it. In fact, we've had it a little bit when we've done a couple of stand-up spots since we've been allowed back out and stuff, where someone's going to shout a, co a, a podcast catchphrase at you. Do you know what I mean? They're going to go, cha, upset me. Like, they're going to do that. Yeah. So what mm. Andrew Schultz started doing was at the start of every tour show, he'd go, right, we're going to do one. And he'd go on dick talk on three. Because, like, they had a thing on their podcast where they were talking about their dick, so they'd go, dick talk. Yeah. So it, I, I seen him go, dick talk on three in the whole room. He goes, one, two, three, the whole room, dick talk. And then he did his thing because he was like, I need to preempt it. He got it, it out of the way. I think we're going to have to do something like that. But do you think you're going to have to give your audience a little yeah. 20 seconds of Uncle Roger and then be like, and now I'm Nigel and I'm actually a fucking great stand-up as well? well? Well, I've thought about this and I think maybe I can have Uncle Roger open for myself so I save money on the opener as well, you know? <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> oh my God. 10 minutes of Uncle Roger. And How I, devastated would you be, though, if you come out after the interval and they'd fucked <laughs> off? <laughs> well, they still paid. Yeah. So. <laughs> Uncle Roger was great not staying to see that yeah. Nigel come to us, not. Yeah. <laughs> Some thick cunt on YouTube. Support that was brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> fucking idiot. I think you have to give them a little bit, right? You know. Yeah, you've got to, like... Something. Who were we talking to? You can't be the guy who's like, no. This is my art and my stand up. Oh, like, you've got no. to play yeah, the game yeah. a little Maybe bit. Maybe a little encore thing. Uncle when Roger you go can and see on. a band, they'll sneak in some songs from the new album and they play yeah. the bangers. Yeah. Yeah. I, even, yeah. I went to see Elbow and they apologized for playing songs from the new album. They're like, <laughs> sorry, everyone. <laughs> Two from the new album, like like they knew and they were like, now we'll do the ones you really want. Like it's you've got to play the game a yeah. bit. Here's the ones yeah. you can't sing along to. Yeah, no. this is, these are more nodders. <laughs> oh, shall we have a quick little break and uh, we'll do some uh, correspondence? We shall. Shall, shall we do that? Yes, shall, shall we? Yes. What's happening, guys? It's Adam here, and I'm here to tell you yet again that this podcast, Have A Word, is supported and brought to you by Manscaped, the world's best male grooming products, especially for that below-the-belt grooming. And they've got some big news. They've just released their cologne scent. Who knew smelling this good could feel this good as well? Join the movement apart and become a part of 2 million people who are now trusting Manscaped to shave their balls. Now, I shave me balls once a week, twice if I'm feeling frisky. Uh, and since I've started using Manscaped, I've stopped cutting the bag. I don't snag the bag anymore. Manscaped, I, I know they're a sponsor of this podcast. And I'm literally getting money to say that they're great, but I don't use anyone else anymore. They're absolutely brilliant. They've got the Perfect Package 3.0, where you get the ear trimmer called the Weed Whacker. You can use that on your nose as well. You get the Lawn Mower 3.0, which is the little wazza for your balls and that. There's Ball deodorant, there's ball toner, there's ball wipes. Basically, if you clean yourself up down there, lads, right, if you get a bit, a little bit neater, right, a little bit shaved down there and make it smell nice, your beard's going to want to suck it off more often. So why aren't you doing it? 
Trust me, go to manscaped.com right now and use the promo code WORD at checkout. That's W-O-R-D. You'll get 20% off and you'll get free worldwide shipping and they'll stay dead happy with us because we're sending them a few customers. They'll keep sponsoring the podcast and we can keep bringing you this top-level bullshit for free. Go do it now and then come back. Go ahead, shave your balls and stop them stanking. Becky Black! Have we got some letters from lovers? Um, we've got a few things. Uh, Richard Peel in Australia says, Adamski, Dansky, um, Carlos. Oh, my God. He's th- People take the piss with these names, and then they, they end up being a paragraph, and I'm like, just ask the fucking question. I've been watching... No! I I like the names. Don't discourage that at all. It says Adam, Dan, Carl, and Finn. I've been watching Last One Laughing Australia on Prime. Mm -hmm. They put 10 comedians in a room and they have to try and make each other laugh. If they laugh, they get a yellow card. Laugh twice and they get a red card and they're out. Last one standing wins 100 grand. So It's like footballer. Assuming Adam, it is, isn't it? That's like sport. (laughs) Yeah. I wonder if that's a coincidence. Assuming Adam and Dan were two of the ten, and obviously Nigel is now three of the ten, which other seven comedians uh, would you want in that think you could make laugh, and who wouldn't, who you wouldn't want to see because they were uh, they'd be able to make you laugh? So, who who are the good laughers that you'd love in there with you that you can think of that are comedians? Like and who, seven shite yeah. sycophantic <laughs> open spots, don't yeah. you? And then yeah. we're just trying <laughs> yes. to people please. Yeah. <laughs> no, I really yeah. like you too. Can you get me some gigs? You want them? Yeah, the people who drive. The, people, the Londoners who drive other comics to, to gigs and stuff. Yeah. yeah. You the, want people the who still fill in though. the mayor control thing, yeah. Yeah. Um there are some I mean, there are some absolute psycho new comedians that don't laugh at you. And it is really unnerving. You're like, mate, you really in a dressing room they're like like play the game a little bit, mate. I'm just yeah. you're yeah. just you unnerving me. And I'm, I'm not saying it makes them a good or bad comic, but it is nice when the, the a, newbies are nervous and laugh at your shit jokes. Yeah, it makes them a bad human. You know, that's what human beings are supposed to do, right? Just polite laughing at each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Who are the comics you wouldn't want to see in there? If you're trying to win that hundred grand and it's not who's the best comic because that doesn't match up. Mm-hmm. It's who makes you yeah, laugh laughs. in person because there are some fucking brilliant comics out there who in the dressing room are just standard blokes and are not the funniest people knocking about. Mm. Then there Eshan are guys. makes me laugh a lot. Eshan yeah. does. Eshan. I, w- I wouldn't want, yeah, Eshan. Yeah. <laughs> Adam's not budging on his name. He re- he's been told and he's like, nah. We had, we had Eshan in last, a couple of weeks ago and he was like, oh, by the way, you've been saying that wrong for like six years. And I was like, well, that's your fault. Because that should have been corrected in week one. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, Eshan. Mm. Um, it isn't necessarily the best comics, is it? Like, no, it it isn't always no, the best comics. You. <laughs> 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 you fucking dickhead! Um, oh. He'll come up with some uh, brown puns, you know. Ed That's what he just, likes to do, right? Ed makes me cry laughing because I've hung out with him so much. Like, I don't really see him mm. that much anymore. Um. But yeah, he, like, I have a good friend, Danny Clives. You know him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah he Danny makes me Clives. Laugh. Yeah. Oh my god, I've not thought about Danny for ages. Brennan makes me laugh because he's always willing to say something inappropriate. Alfie as well. Sean Alfie. Walsh. Sean Walsh is funny, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like he's funny. He's like he's a successful, brilliant comedian, and he always seems befuddled by life. Like, yeah. like the train mm-hmm. journey up to Manchester is like he's always like. I know, mate. Like yeah. he's always something. And then Carl. You know about the time he ended up in Hartford, but he was meant to be in Hereford. <laughs> what? Sean Walsh went to the wrong city <laughs> for a tour show with a thousand people waiting. Fuck. Oh my days. And he just had to reschedule it. Oh, he, he missed it. Hart, Hartford to. It's like four hours apart. Yeah. <laughs> so Hartford, Hartford in Hertfordshire. So that's what near yeah, what yeah. near yeah. what famously. Uh-huh. So. They're having that, aren't they? That, if you're oh, going to make that mistake title. and you live in London, you're going to be like, I accidentally went, you know, half an hour north <laughs> rather than four hours to the fucking west. <laughs> I've been on with comedians who've turned up to the place where the invoice was addressed. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good where you're like, where's the headliner? And it was Tony Law because 
of course it was Tony Law. <laughs> yeah. Because Tony Law, like, it's like he lives his day-to-day -day life and he's not tuned into like planet Earth, and it's what makes him amazing, and it probably mm -hmm. what makes it really hard to manage him. But he just got an he got an email going, could you invoice here? And obviously, on every invoice is an address, yeah. and that's where the business was. And so he went, cool, I'll drive there then. <laughs> just and offices. So, so he, is, <laughs> no, he got to a residential house. <laughs> Because Al Jackson, who runs the gig, lives in a house in Stourbridge. <laughs> <laughs> and so he turned up at 42 Whatever's Road in Stourbridge, knocked on the door, and Al Jackson's wife went, what? <laughs> hey, hey, I'm here to do a gig. You're fucking not, mate. I'm feeding the baby. So they had to do a quick drive north to Shrewsbury. Mm -hmm. Have you ever fucked up like that? No, I've been very organized. I get to places on time. My life is boring, man. I, I always nail the things I'm supposed to do. You know? Good. <laughs> yeah. That's just like you and me, Adam, isn't it? Yeah. So good at nailing all those yeah. life things. Do you want a job here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pay you really well. <laughs> fuck Google AdSense. Hey, at Don't the, at the lockdown, AdSense. We in, love the, them. in the lockdown lock in, I weed on my own shorts. I really think <laughs> I could learn a lot from Nigel. I just do everything do well. What? Yeah, but I don't get you pissed on. No. No, I didn't. You were there. We told the story on the pod. Oh, yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. All right, cool. Isn't that an Asian thing, though, to be like... Yeah. To wait, to wait so. on your own. To children. a fault sometimes, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. I think to a fault sometimes. You're just brought up to be very, like, organized, meticulous, you know, work hard, put your head down and just work. And sometimes we, we, we I don't have a lot of good stories. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. So what is it like being in, like, a death metal band in Asia? Like... <laughs> <laughs> how are we, how do you? See <laughs> I don't know, but like, if that's the culture of like I meticulous, really organized, yeah. what's it like to be a rock star in Malaysia? Like this, these cunts are crazy. They turn up five to ten minutes late. That's how yeah. rock and roll they are. It's like to be and a bullfighter the, in Asia as well. What's that like? Bullfight. <laughs> Do we have bullfighting? My question huh? definitely made sense within the context of the conversation. Yeah. <laughs> that was <laughs> daft shite. Yes, yes. <laughs> Jarry also got a song about it. <laughs> He's what? what? Jarry also got a song about it. About what? what? what bullfighting in. No, always on time. No one say anything. <laughs> I want that to hang. I want in, ten in seconds infamy. of silence. Seriously. That's a fucking good one. Right. This is what this what that joke deserves. <laughs> One of the most successful YouTube uh, comedy shows on the, online at the moment. <laughs> Doing pretty well. Doing pretty well. It's fucking great. Yeah, that was a good one. I'm not having that. Sorry. It was great because you because he's always on time. Yeah. And you you like oh, there's a song called that, but there's uh. no correlation between Go! Asian culture and Jar Rule, is there? No. <laughs> What's it like to be Jar Rule in Asia? <laughs> I got you, mate. I got you. Mate. No, at least here you guys if you guys live a very organized life you know you, you follow the path go to uni you get a good job you can always do a gap year in Southeast Asia right Does go it to look Thailand like any of us did that <laughs> but, no not you <laughs> <laughs> you guys fuck up enough here you don't need to go to Asia to I'm, I'm currently yeah. in my 10th gap year <laughs> <laughs> where you travel to Hong Kong <laughs> yeah. yeah we were gonna do Thailand um Shall we do some uh, have a words as what is that is the podcast, isn't it? Can do. Yeah. So do you, you know that we do have a words and try and sort people's lives out and everything? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, cool. That's it. I don't know why I felt the need to explain what it was without actually doing it. It's for first time listeners, though, isn't it? You directed it, Nigel, but it's actually for first time listeners. Yeah, um, yeah. It's to, to, for, for them to understand what's going on. First time listeners. Ja Rule had a song called Always on Time. So that's within. It's good. So, when uh, you, when you guys mention like the comedy industry and specific comics, yeah, do do, do people do you, do you lose do, do people tune out if they don't know who the comics are? I hope so. I hope they go <laughs> Danny Clyde. <Yeah. laughs> I don't know exactly who that is. Oh. Someone told me recently a fan or uh, who I know that she's not into the comedy politics of the show. So yeah. to fuck off. But we get a lot mm. of people who write in saying they love it. Yeah. So it's finding a balance. We try not to sort of over egg it and do like three sections of it every week. Yeah. But every couple of weeks, we'll like we get so many comedy <laughs> questions. Can't get a bit wriggly then, like really. I. Uh, it's hard, isn't it? Because people are, are absolutely allowed to have their opinion. 
Like when you put up that thing about like we made a meme of Carl's face going like, and people were like, "Oh, when Dan says bruh for the fucking eighth time in two minutes, <laughs> they got thirty likes." I was like, nying, nying, nying. <laughs> <laughs> "Fair enough." But like, we literally got an email going, "I like this podcast, but we're not when you talk about Mother Teresa and jizz." <laughs> and in the end, and in the end, you've just got to do what you do, aren't you? If we're yeah. going to talk about Mother Teresa and jizz and Danny Clive's, we're going to do it. Yeah, and Ja Rule, Carl. But we've also yes. mentioned Ja Rule. You know, got to get we've to also got to accept that even the most sort of flippant of Christians, right? Huh? The, the, the Christians who are like, I'm a Christian, but I'm quite calm about it. Yeah. Even they might get to a point where you're wearing a Mother Teresa mask <laughs> and I'm talking about coming in your bum, where they might go, that, that's my line. We've got to accept that for someone, that is the line. Yeah. And that, that might warrant an email. We haven't email. found our line yet. Yeah. We haven't. I know we have. <laughs> what, is it, is it Adam Road doing Uncle Roger? No. That no. no. That's so far away from the actual <laughs> line we found. <laughs> no. I'm sort of seeing what that producer was on about, really. But I think he might have a point. I'm going to rein this in. Who's drinking? Um, lads, I need you to have a word with my mate, James Osprey. Osprey. He just needs to be told. He's got Twitter, which he needs to pack in. He's got a few followers and once did a tweet, which got like 12,000 shares, but he tweets at least 100 times a day, like maybe one in a blue moon are funny, but half of them are actually shite. I love it when mates just take the gloves off and like, yeah, I'm going to do this publicly. And just about fucking nonsense. Tell him to pack it in, please. Fuck, he also needs to be told when he's on PS Party and we're all playing Warzone or Pro Clubs and he just gets off without saying anything to go and tweet. He just needs to say bye or something because he can't be asked playing today. Like, it, this is the winch. He's having a winch. Shut up! Just mute him. Yeah. yeah. You don't like it. Don't follow him. Shut up. No, he's his mate in real life. And I'm telling him to shut up. He's a whinging old gimp. Do you know what he's, uh, that's like? He's like acting like a girl who doesn't want a, a mate to go out with lads. Well, you could have said bye to me. You were asleep? Yeah, but you should have said bye. He's a gobshite. Fuck off. I honestly, I completely disagree. People who are uh, like... If you are at the point where your mates are going, oh my God, get off your phone. This is great. <laughs> Solid banter here. <laughs> ja Rule. Uh, <laughs> if you are. Oh, that's the new one. If you are. Ja Rule. <laughs> it's a fucking good Mate, joke. I think it's an absolutely valid have a word. If he's tweeting all the fucking time, he's had one. To get 12,000 shares on a tweet, you've nailed it. But the lad is saying, my mate James, he's always on his fucking phone. He's always mm. tweeting. It's not good. It's not great. He's not actually in the room. He fucks off when we're messing around on, on PlayStation. What are we doing? Like, that I think is a valid have a word. He could end up making money from Twitter. What do you think? I, I think, well, at least it's Twitter, you know? Can you imagine if he gets on, like, TikTok? <laughs> and he makes like a hundred TikToks a day. He would just be hanging out, and suddenly he puts a ring light on and starts like, dancing. <laughs> so keep it on tip, tip, uh, keep it on Twitter. That's okay. Do you, you use know? a ring light for Uncle Roger? I used to when I started. Then I upgraded to something better. <laughs> yeah. I want a ring light for here, just to make me look beautiful. Yeah, you get the Adam, little. You've literally been bitching about these lights for the last three weeks. <laughs> I want a light here. <laughs> if you... Adam's mental enough that he will get a light, a light there. Go, that's my eyes. Uh, this is really hurting. <laughs> Who put this light here? It was you. Do you remember three weeks ago yeah. when you fucking asked for one? Oh my god, that's amazing. It's TikTok. We when we started doing this site, it was perceived that TikTok was like for kids a bit. It's mm. really booming. That's why up, I like isn't it, it in terms you know? of numbers. That's why you like <laughs> that's it. That's what you're into. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> wow. Yeah. And we'll just like that hang. <laughs> <laughs> we we hung you out to dry. I there. like it. Yeah. You don't even have to go <laughs> near to a school anymore, you know? The access has been so easy. Do you, you've had success with YouTube and everything. Yeah. You've obviously, like, we, I don't do loads of tweets. I, I much prefer the podcast format. Mm -hmm. I think it's- To put that into context, our little Dan's on Twitter. Carl's worked here since- Oh no, I've known Dan a decade. Yeah, and mm -hmm. Dan followed Carl back last week. <laughs> 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 yep. Finn. Finn's not. not <laughs> Sorry, mate. Just 
I love the way he's noticed and gone, nah. <laughs> Finn's literally written songs about my relationship and I've not even followed him on Twitter. Oh. Do you bother with the the trying to trying to because so many comedians do that thing of like, well, loads of comics are doing tweets and, and uh. they're working out. Look at Reese James, he's fucking brilliant on Twitter. There are guys who just it just suits. Yeah. And then there are guys, and we've said this from the start, there are some guys who are like, everyone's doing that, well, I'll do it. And they make themselves look like fucking Muppets. I just don't think it suits me, so I don't bother that much. Mm -hmm. Do you play the game with that or you're not on Twitter? I don't think it suits me either, you know, and I just, I just, whatever I put on YouTube, I clip up a one minute clip and put it on Twitter. That's how I use it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just repurposing. I've, I've started this week putting stuff on TikTok, but I've said, and I, look, you know, I'm fickle. I might change my mind mm -hmm. at some point, but like, I think I'm decent at stand up and podcasting. So I'm just going to put stand up and podcast clips on because there's so many comics now doing the holding the camera every type of person on a night out yeah. and doing that. And I'm just like, I don't think I'll be good at it. I don't particularly want to do it. So I'm just going to keep putting stuff up that I think I'm good at and whatever lands, lands. And I'm going to not try and flood it with content that I'm not comfortable doing. Um, you could do makeup tutorials. Makeup tutorials. Yeah, yeah. Get the ring light. Oh. You're ready to go. <laughs> yeah. I actually think it would work really well if Adam Rose started doing makeup tutorials. Right, what you want to do is make yourself look proper fucking dirty. <laughs> Like you love it up the ass, <laughs> loads of shares. Please, do I, I genuinely think this is so annoying. I can't believe that you were like, "No, fuck off." That is the can't most annoying, I was like, mate. No, fuck off. I just me like Jesus. It's but you, but you me. pull your punches with Twitter. You do tweet, but like the incessant all the time, all the time, all the time. That's just crap. I actually see people tweet all the time and I'm like, how can you tweet this much and get no likes and be like, I'm going to keep going. But why it's really going to crack on. Well, why does he care? Yeah, just scroll, scroll through, you know? Just like, just let us make do whatever he wants to do and stop being a whinging twat. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Like, I I'm think just, so. I'm, just I'm with Adam on this. Crack on. And don't be pissed off because he's left a PlayStation lobby without saying bye. Yeah. <laughs> Fair enough. You've been told, mate. Like, James, keep tweeting, and I will not follow you. That's how that's going to go yeah. down. <laughs> Imagine if you follow him before you follow Finn. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me find oh, him. Don't no, do it. no, 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 don't, don't do it. Don't. Let me find James. No, I'm going to find James. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me try and find this kid. Let's, you said it's going to fall All off? we've got is that his name is James. So this one. No, no, off. we've not. We've not. We've <laughs> literally said his name three times wrong. James Opera. Yeah, no, let's find out what he tweets about. Yeah, let's oh. look at it. Oh, I've got him. Read I've got him. Out. I've got him. No, oh, this can't be him. He's got zero followers. If James Opray, if if the if this is the actual James Opray at James Opray, and his mates going, he needs to fuck off. He's he's on Twitter all the time. I agree because he's got zero followers. <laughs> He's one of them pervy cunts who's like, I haven't got a picture and I don't have any followers, but I follow loads of people. <laughs> oh, I can't find him. Would that piss you off, Finn? Finn, you all right? Yeah. Not in the room. <laughs> <laughs> He's in the edit. Um, <laughs> we work him so hard. It's yeah. well harsh, isn't it? Finn, will you come and be a producer? Don't you dare listen to the episode. <laughs> Get working while we're having fun. And then when we've finished having fun, you do the producer. <laughs> We need an intern for you to boss around, mate. Do we have any more correspondence? We do, you? from Harry Robinson, the G-O-A-T. Hi, Lids, hope you're well. Got a little bit of a petty have a word for you. I need you to have a word with a senior editor of a local newspaper. Which I one? Tell me. As you, the Runcorn Fuck Knuckle. <laughs> As you might know, I'm a student journalist and do some freelancing. Free being the key part of that word for local newspapers to get bylines and build up my portfolio. The work really should be paid, but the experience and bylines are important. So it's on. Uh, so it's by the by. I recently got an article printed in the local paper, prominently displayed on page three. I didn't have my tits out, but didn't get a chance to buy the paper to keep a cut in. I'm a sucker for mementos of my early work. So about two weeks ago, after it had been in the paper, I contacted the editor of the paper in question to ask if they could send me a spare copy that didn't get sold. Despite me working for free and providing them with one of the main stories of that day's paper, the editor had the fucking cheek to ask one of the other reporters, reporters to sell me a copy. They fully wanted me to pay 85 pence for a two-week-old newspaper that I contributed towards for nothing. Chop! 
Luckily, the reporter didn't listen, because he's a good egg, and sent me a copy anyway. But the principle still stands. People shouldn't be pedantic twats. Have a word with them for me, will you? All the best, lads. Harry Robbo. Over to you, Nigel. Yeah, what a what a, what a dick. The senior editor is a, a dick. Yeah, just yeah. Give, him, give him the newspaper, man. I think we should go to wherever this is. Harry. <laughs> I honestly thought uh, you were going to go, I think we should publish the paper. <laughs> <laughs> I think we should buy the paper and publish it and get a printing press in room two. I have a weird news. It's, it's, um, where? it's, yeah. Yeah. I think it's in I mean? Sheffield. What? It's in Sheffield. Oh, it's, it's the Sheffield paper. Tribune. Mm. The Sheffield Gazette, maybe. The Sheffield mm. Star. Sheffield Star. The Sheffield, Sheffield Times. Nailed. <laughs> Post. Sheffield Post. That was the worst effort. The Sheffield cunt. I, I literally think my batteries are running low. I was like, the Sheffield cunt, Adam. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone? Hang on. And I got fucking a minute silence for the Ja Rule joke. <laughs> the Sheffield cunt. Yeah, that, that was bad, but yours was way worse, mate. Mine was actually fire. I, I think we need another five seconds <laughs> just yeah, thinking about that joke. Careful. Comment below if you think it was fire. Fuck off. Uh, <laughs> Buy a copy of the Sheffield cunt and it'll be the main story that day. Man from Runcorp. Um <laughs> Does Ja rule? Go here, on, yeah. Here's my attitude here. I think what we should do, right, collectively, you can come too, today's yeah. guest. I think we should go straight after this. He hasn't got a train until five o'clock. Going to have a bit of time. Mm -hmm. Get to Sheffield and back. For right. revenge. I think we turn up with weapons. Yeah. Right. We ask. We never mention the weapons. No. Just like, you know, I've got an Uzi. You've got <laughs> machete. Just the weapons that we've got to hand. Yeah, Uzi, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We turn up with weapons, mm -hmm. and we're just like, hey, uh, we're friends of Harry Robinson's, and uh, he wants a copy of that paper. And then if they go, yeah, we told him we could have it for 85p, I'll give him the 85p. He's done plenty of work for us, Harry. And we'll just do it. But I think just the, the visual of the Uzi will be enough to get us for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he did mm. get it for nothing already. Yeah. So <laughs> you're basically brandishing machine guns unnecessarily. Like you're going in with mm. an Uzi and they're like, we like the report would be like, we did give him the paper though. And I was oh, like, I missed, I missed that bit. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> he missed the bit when he was sat next to you listening. <laughs> but he, but every, Mr. Principal. But everyone knows that. I and he's like, yeah, the yeah, Uzi's do another one. <laughs> I'll try my best to I'll, stay in. How do we get Uzi's in there? Right, lads, I need you to have a word. And then in Adam's head, he's like, just shoot the cunts. On the Twitter one, he was like, no, fuck off, he's fine. Did you listen to it? Not really? I like Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever have you ever done um have you ever done any like like you know when you're trying yeah, to make your way up the, the 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 greasy pole of whatever industry? Have you ever like if I'm looking at Finn who's actually been an intern? <laughs> yeah. uh, Nigel, have you ever done any work like freelance just trying to get some just trying to get your up the ladder? Isn't that like every open spot? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. Yeah, you just go there. How, how does it work over here up, up north in, in London? You just do spots for free, Saturday night, 10 minutes in the middle. Do you do that here? Yeah, you pay them? So the, up here there's a lot of open mics and then the the best comic yeah. sort of uh, initially gets sort of a Thursday middle spot for like 20 uh. quid and then eventually you'll, you might get a 10 on a Friday and then if you smash your 10, you'll get a 20 and then you've really got an L at 20 because you're either going to be in forever or out for two years. There's not uh, many five or tens on weekends anymore, though. No. They used yeah. to be. My my first ever weekend gig at the Frog and Bucket was a five minutes before the headliner. They had a, an open section, mm -hmm. the middle section, and then they put you on for five minutes before the headliner. And I think that's what they'd done for it. My first ever gig uh, when I first got into comedy was five minutes before the headliner. And I just think weekend comedy clubs, even though they're like, yeah, we've got a responsibility to to push people like through the system, they sort of just go, it's not worth it. It's Saturday nights, too too much pressure. Yeah. I think with any any field that's uh, saturated like like comedy or journalism, why would you study journalism nowadays anyway? It's, 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 it's a yeah, dead- Just write your stuff. Yeah, just, just write and publish it. You Do you need a degree to publish in BuzzFeed? <laughs> you know, you don't. I think you don't need to study it, but yeah. Yeah, Harry, you're wasting yeah. your life. <laughs> I did a journalism. So did I. Oh, yeah. That's why they're here now. Yeah. yeah they've really <laughs> never used, used it well. It, though, have you? No. I can write good, though. Yeah, but mm -hmm. did you learn that there? Well. <laughs> no, that, we was got that. Yeah, that was good. That was good. 
That was good. Can I have it back now? Yeah, that was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sorry, Carl. I feel like I'm being a real dick. I think Adam, Adam, Adam yeah. just <laughs> yeah, flew yeah, over like, Adam's head. <laughs> Hey, it turns out you're now the editor of the Sheffield Cunt. <laughs> Man does bad thing. Rate it. I uh, think when we mm. build our empire, the Sheffield Cunt has got to become a real. Oh, we're looking for we're looking we're looking for merchandise. I would love a Sheffield Cunt reporter hoodie. I I, I work for the Sheffield Cunt. <laughs> Toby Foster. I was gonna, so. Yeah. <laughs> I'm joking. Can we just clarify there? I'm joking. I was waiting to say that's going Toby don't. Foster. I was, the Sheffield I was joking. I went, to, he went, come on. <laughs> I would love it if at the end of this episode, I get in shit after Adam started going, Uncle Walter. And it was like, that's classic. That's classic. I have a word. But you never turn on a businessman from the South Yorkshire area. <laughs> You know, I don't mind racism. Uncle Roger, I find very offensive. Thanks very much, thank you. Oh, good. I couldn't resist. Stop. How <laughs> How can you resist? And when someone clips this out and sends it to Toby, he's going to be really confused when halfway through my apology, Adam goes, Uncle Roger. <laughs> <laughs> In the edit, can you quickly cut to Nigel? <laughs> there you go. Fuck, fuck for that. Oh, dear. Oh, yeah. Look, the, the Pedantic editors, little shit. Editors yeah. are gobshite. Mm -hmm. I'd have given him the AC5P and then took it out of his face. Uh, he, he should have a free subscription to the paper, right? Yeah. yeah. Just if you, if you contribute Whatever. to it. Yeah, you yeah. should yeah. have a free paper every, is it daily or weekly? Yeah. I don't, I don't know. Even, we've, we, we don't even know what paper it is. Yeah. <laughs> but he just, he's moving to America, isn't he, Harry? He is, yeah. He's going to be a right bastard oh. for the Sheffield cunt to get delivered yeah. at Northwestern <laughs> University. 85p. One really pissed off Yorkshire paper, yeah. paper boy, like, I have to come to Chicago every fucking day. And you're not even paying for it. <laughs> is he taking that bike on the plane? Or is he hiring a moment he gets there? <laughs> <laughs> fucking pedaling across the I'm gonna say an ocean and open straight. This is the obvious. Oh, oh. Good God. The Atlantic? Yeah. I know. Comedy. No. Say the wrong one. <laughs> oh, <yeah>. No. <laughs> John. <laughs> Sometimes when when a guest's with us <laughs> when when a guest's with us, mm. I have these moments where I look over and you can see them thinking, This is doing well. Yeah. <laughs> Fair dues. Fair dues. Um we got it's one been, more. No. We have. Oh we have. You said you do you reckon you let's see, I'm gonna say I'm gonna do Nigel, apology. I'm gonna see if okay. you can stay on this one. Do, 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 do. Uh, hello host when Dan talked about the fact that he and Laura don't sleep in the same bed I thought it was weird and it made me think I could just never be the person uh, in a relationship park there just for one second do you think that's weird Dan and his wife they've just had their second child don't stay in the same bedroom mm. hang on nothing to do with the child this mm -hmm. has been going on for the last four wonderful years I Terry. spoke to Sam about this, we and she it? finds yeah. it weird. And she so, finds it weird. Me and Terry can, no, me and Terry can do it. It, it. What's the reasoning? Just so you can sleep better at night? Sleep and, you know, look at my online articles and really enjoy... <laughs> Have a big wank on my own oh. and then sleep. <laughs> my wife is beautiful and she's a great <laughs> and I love and that's my dick. And I love being married to her, but uh -huh. sleeping next to her is brutal. She's snorry, mm. uh. un unreasonably warm in the night. Oh my god, yeah. Yeah. Like a, not Laura. Just a <laughs> I, I <think. laughs> Let's talk to you about that actually. She is boiling, lad. Lad, no offense. <laughs> um, right. I, I think if you have enough bedrooms in your house to do that, go for it, man. Yeah. Exactly. Sleeping in someone, sometimes it's like like you said, either I sometimes I snore, sometimes she snores, or she wakes me up going to the toilet, you know. I've been married before, I I know. Yeah. You what? I've been married before. I'm divorced now. Oh wow. Yeah. Well, we meandered round to the juicy bit, didn't we? We well, took yeah. our time to get there. <laughs> you only asked about Uncle Roger, and then let's go to listen to the questions, you know? <laughs> uh, can you do your Uncle Roger voice, and then have you ever fallen out of love? <laughs> really left it. <laughs> this guy's a con, he's already yeah. on Twitter. Have you yeah. been divorced? <laughs> um, was it because of sleeping arrangements? 
Uh, no, no, I, I don't think it's that. I think it's more like uh, my personality and general vibe. <laughs> <laughs> well, comedy takes a toll on your it relationships, right? Does, mate. How long were yeah. you married for? Uh, four years. I got married really young. And then, yeah, we should have covered this way in the beginning. Yeah. No, but let's cover it now. <laughs> yeah. I think sometimes yeah. com- comedy podcasts shouldn't start uh, too early with like, hi, Nigel, thanks for coming on. When did you first get married? <laughs> yeah. I think it just sets a weird tone. Yeah, I think there was a point in my, um, when, you know, comedy starting up, I, I still had a full-time, I live in London, right? So you have to like, rent is expensive. I yeah. kept a full-time day job. I was gigging four or five nights a week, traveling and stuff. And then I was still trying to make one YouTube video a week. So I literally had no time for her at all. And I was also sometimes, you know, short tempered because I was stressed, you know, so that definitely didn't help. Every weekend I was gone, right? Yeah, it's yeah. hard. It'd be so easy. I, I don't think she did, but it'd be so easy for her to have an affair, you know? Yeah. I, I suppose it'd be easier for you to have an affair as well, wouldn't it? Because you were the one away. Like, I, I think if you're married to a comic, you've got to be so... It's such a tricky one. You've got, there's got to be trust there and you've yeah. got to like your own time. It's not what everyone wants to be involved with relationship wise. Is it easy to have an affair though as a comic? You're in different towns every night. It's not like this, you can see the same affair. It's not easy you know? to have an affair, but I think it's easy to fuck a different woman in every town in the country. I mean, it is in theory, mm, isn't it? Yeah, but in theory. If I turn up like, hey. <laughs> Why would you do, do wanna, that face? Do you want to come to Watford Junglers? <laughs> like, Why would you do that face? Because that's me trying to get laid. Yeah. <laughs> it, work, it works really well. Especially in Sheffield. <laughs> I work for the cunt. I love how in your... Do you want to come to Watford Junglers? So you haven't met it at the gig. Yeah. This is at the train station. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're trying to pick up booty calls no. on the way. <laughs> it's too easy. Too easy pulling after the gig. I like to pull before the gig. <laughs> Off junglers. Have you got a spare ticket? I didn't. I didn't do well as a single man for a lot of those years. <laughs> Doing this face. I wasn't even playing what for junglers. That was the weird thing. I just took them to what for junglers. <laughs> yeah. I um. Yeah. How old were you when you got married? Twenty four. All right. Cool. Yeah. Too young, man. Yeah, that is young. Yeah. yeah. She's still in London though. We're still friends. It's okay. She's with, with a new guy now, Ian. Yeah. Is Who's he Malaysian? <laughs> yes. yes, mate. Yes. Beautiful. <laughs> Sounds Malaysian yes. as fuck. <laughs> that, that's, that's her type, really. Malaysian men with old school English. Who sound like my dad's mates. At Wordian names. Um, oh. No, no, he's British. British. <laughs> Seems like a good guy. I Shout know. out, Ian. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this one's for you, mate. Nigel's ex-wife's new fella. What up? Um, hi, Toby Foster. Hope you're still watching. <laughs> so we don't sleep together is basically, and that's been how it's been for a while. Well, now I've found that I'm struggling to sleep when I'm in bed with my girlfriend. And a few nights ago, I snuck away to the spare room and got myself to sleep in what felt like a minute. My girlfriend came in the next morning and wasn't happy that I wasn't there when she woke up. I can see that she thinks this is a dig, but there's no way for me to say it nicely. I do prefer to sleep alone every now and then. There you go. Never mind about whose relationship's on the rocks. Doesn't, it's nothing. It's not, there's no correlation. You can be fine. You just get a good night's sleep. Get to pull your pudding. Does that make sense? Is it wrong to want to, to not sleep with your partner? I've never had this issue with any of my exes. Don't say that to your missus. Do I need to have a word with myself or with her? I'm very confused about this one. Wow. Oh, shit. You haven't. <laughs> He's put anonymous at the end. <laughs> doop, doop, doop. Every fucking Every time. fucking week. Every time. And you've mentioned it loads as well. Um, no, it's only a, it was only a little bit. You'll be able to edit that out. Oh, I'll have to. Yeah, obviously. Yeah. You will have to? Yeah. Every time.
Oh, here's the thing. Fair enough to this random man who's written in. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, and we'll never know who it was. Then he wants to sleep on his own. It's the sneaking out that's pissed her off because it's confusing. This, I don't mm. know whether I told you this. On a New Year's Eve, I stayed in Sam's mum and dad's house with Sam overnight. And uh, in the morning, so I sleep next to naked a lot of the time. Occasionally, I'll leave one sock on. Like sometimes, that. my undies, like right? That. So, I had my undies on. Undies. And I woke up, and I was like, I really need a wee. So, <laughs> just got my undies on. They've only got one bathroom, and it's downstairs. So, I got dressed, in, like, to go to the toilet. <laughs> and as I was halfway through getting dressed, this is, like, the, the second time I've met my girlfriend's parents, okay. right? She woke up, and she was like, where are you going? <laughs> And I was like, I'm going to the toilet. She was like, I thought you were leaving. And I was like, do you really think I was going to come round on New Year's Eve and bounce in the middle of the night? She was like, well, why are you dressed? I was like, because I'm not meeting your mum and dad for the <laughs> second time. And then in the morning, coming down on the undies, being like, you're right, Cole. She's going for the shit, lads. See you would now, though, would you? Yeah. What? You would now. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't even keep me on No, you Just wouldn't. One sock. Woo! <laughs> 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 no, you wouldn't. All right, Trish. Get on there. Being having to pass her dad on the stairs with you just in your underpants would be one of the worst moments of any New Year's Eve in the history of New Year's Eve. Like, Adam, it's four mid <laughs> It's fucking half ten. <laughs> Where are you going? The downstairs toilet. Do you know there's one upstairs? No, that that makes me look silly. I'm just gonna go and walk myself around the house in my underpants. Uh, I don't know, man. I think this is the future. And I I know people are like, no, you need to sleep next to your missus. I don't think you do. Mm-hmm. I don't think you do. Is Sam, Sam not be all right with it if you were like, I'm in the spare room? Sam doesn't like it if I go down and play FIFA while she sleeps. Whatever like, makes you happy, mm-hmm. and if that makes you happy, then yeah. If it makes someone else happy, then. <laughs> <laughs> she just wants me to be close to her. Genuinely. And I like it. I want her to be close, but not touching. Do you know what I mean? Get your fucking radiator back off me. Yeah. yeah, but like I, I, I'll always stay in the same room as me, Mrs. I don't mind it. Yeah, what, what if like maybe, maybe it is a sneaking off, right? That she's upset about. So tell her before you yeah. go to bed, right? Yeah. That I like prefer sleep by myself. So cuddle after, her to sleep, I, and then after fuck I fuck off. you, I'm gonna yeah go. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. see, that's that's where that's where a lot of the issues come. The sex changes things. Like for me. This is how married ah, I am. Okay. I hadn't even considered sex in any of this. I was like, <laughs> you're just going to bed in a different room. Good night. Yeah. Good night. <laughs> Sometimes we don't even kiss. No, 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 no. All of you guys are like, well, when are you going to fuck her? You're going to fuck her and then go in another room. That is going to cause problems, isn't it? Because mm. if you like make love and then roll off and then keep yeah. rolling into the spare room, people are going to get pissed well, you off. You have to have the recuddle after the bathroom visit the 10 minutes afterwards. Yeah. That it, it is super awkward. Once you've banged, it's difficult to leave the bed, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. but you, you have to have the recuddle and then the separation. Yeah. Well, no, once you recuddle, it's tougher, right? You, yeah. you bang, it is, clean yourself up, and just yeah. go. But well, that's, that's a bit cut and dry. What? Fucking someone, then wiping your dick <laughs> and then leaving <laughs> makes them feel like a prostitute. I guarantee it does. Because you're like, none of this on me. <laughs> And I'm leaving. <laughs> now we've finished. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be in the other room. That's fair. Okay. A bit of cuddling afterwards. The money's sure. on the side. <laughs> oh. Well, good luck to you, random man. Random man. Who we don't know. Who we don't. We just will never, never so know. I think the solution is then to just don't have sex then. That you can just sleep you in You see, any, everyone's any coming around to my way yeah. of thinking. I mean, once you get married, the sex just dwindles anyway. Right? Yeah. That's because you were away every weekend, though. <laughs> <laughs> Why are we having sex anymore? Because yeah. you're in another city, Nigel. I'm starting to think. Well, I'm starting to realise where we don't talk to, about the divorce early on in the podcast. <laughs> it just you know, it just dwindles and it's <laughs> shit in it. Like, it's so much better talking to Adam, like a whole new world. I just want to be with her all the time. We'll see. Yeah. We'll see, kid. We will. Mm. I like a cuddly sleep, me. You do. Yeah. With the window open. So you can climb out. <laughs> <laughs> Just to avoid a dad on the stairs. Yes. <laughs> Gets 
gets caught on the on the roof. <laughs> Adam, what are you soccer. doing? Uh, <laughs> bathroom. Uh, well, this has been <laughs> a pod. Fantastic. I've had a lot of fun today. Thank you to all the anon- anonymous emailers. They were great. You know, anonymous whoever emails. they are. <clears throat> yeah. It's good yeah. to hear from someone new. Yeah. <laughs> Nigel, thanks so much for travelling up to talk our silly nonsense. You've been great fun. Where can people find you on the internet? Uh, my social media is Mr. Nigel Ung, M R N I G E L N G, or just search Uncle Roger on YouTube. Sweet. Yes. Thank you so much for coming in. Um, uh, my tour is going on sale very soon. If you sign up to the mailing list, adamro.co.uk. Mm-hmm. Uh, you will get priority once the Patreons have had a bit of pi- priority. So patreon.com slash have pod. They're going to get absolute priority on top of the extra episode they already get every week. They also get a little bonus thing most months. And you get early access to these public ones. The Patreon is fucking well worth it, especially starting at just three quid. You get a free copy of the Sheffield Cunt. Yeah. <laughs> Bye, Felicia. Go out. <laughs>